Hello there, you're watching the premium edit of the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in-game tier list. What's an in-game tier list? Well, we're gonna spend about 20 minutes explaining it. If you already know, you can use the time codes below to skip ahead. Of course, if you don't know, you can still use the time code to skip ahead. Do it. I dare you. In fact, I double dog dare you. I triple dog dare you. I quadruple dog dare you. I quintuple dog dare you. I sextuple dog dare you. I septuple dog dare you. I octuple dog dare you. This game has a lot of dogs. Oh, uh, hang on. Ah, uh, Tinder? Our girl's right first. We get to use this new graphic. Check this out. Band. And we can combo it with this. No hot girls allowed, okay? So what are the criteria for this list? Well, I'm considering in-game to be from the moment you leave your house uh, until the moment the credits roll. So that's not quite up to the Hall of Fame for two reasons. One, uh, because the game actually continues past the Elite Four arc. And two, because there is no Hall of Fame. Because this game is very well made and very complete and definitely worth $60. I'll try to keep story spoilers out of the list, but we do have to discuss some story battles, and obviously we have to discuss every Pokemon that appears. So if you don't want to get spoiled on what Pokemon are in the game, you're watching the wrong video, buddy. <laughs> so what makes a good in-game Pokemon? Well, for me, a good in-game Pokemon is one that goes first and knocks the opponent out and keeps doing that until the game is over. So for example, you send out your Pokemon, they send out their Pokemon, you go first, you knock them out. They ask, do you want to switch to your next Pokemon? You say no. They send out the next Pokemon, you go first, you knock them out. They ask, do you want to switch to your next Pokemon? You say no. They send out the next Pokemon, you go first, you knock them out. They ask, do you want to switch Pokemon? You say no. They send out the next Pokemon, you go first, you knock them out. And then the battle is over because no trainer actually has a full team. Now this is not a speed run. So I'm not considering the actual time it takes you to do things in game, but I still want to go fast. If you can win in one turn by critting their face off with Flower Trick, hang on. Stop watching this live stream and find love. Banned. <laughs> Stop ruining my takes, bots. Now, this is not actually a speed run, but I still want to go fast if I can help it. I would much rather win in one turn by critting their face off with flower trick then win in 20 to 30 turns eventually by stalling them with like status or leech seed or sandstorm or a bunch of passive stall tactics no there's no reason to do that hit them and kill them and keep doing that until you win so pokemon whose main utility is just being defensive they may be good Pokemon. I would consider Bronzor to be a good Pokemon, but in this list, for what I'm considering, which does not consider post-game, it does not consider raids, it does not consider PvP, defensive Pokemon are bad. So one concept that's really unique to in-game tier lists is availability, which is how much of the game can the Pokemon actually help you with? The clearest example of that would be your starters. So your starters are called starters because you start with them. They can help you with the entire game from the very first battle until the very end. So they have perfect availability. Whereas a Pokemon like, say, Screamtail has very, very bad availability because I believe you can use it in literally one story relevant battle. Availability is actually extra tricky in this game because of the open world format. You can go pretty much anywhere at the start and encounter almost any Pokemon. So I'm going to consider a Pokemon available once you actually have the badges to control it. There's a mechanic called obedience, which is tied to your badge count. So if you have a Pokemon that's too high level relative to your badge count, it won't listen to you. <laughs> you can tell it to use a move, it might do that, it might just do nothing, it might fall asleep, it might use a different move. Now you can level a Pokemon above the level your badge count actually allows you to control and it'll still listen to you. But if you catch that Pokemon above your badge count level, then it'll be disobedient. That would be how I approach 
availability were it not for the Macho Brace. <laughs> So the Macho Brace is an item that has existed for several generations. Usually what its function is, is that it cuts your speed in half and it doubles the amount of EVs you gain. In this game, its functionality is different. How the Macho Brace works is that it bypasses the obedience mechanic with some penalties. So for example, you can catch a Garchomp pretty much at the beginning of the game. It'll be difficult, but you can do it. <laughs> and then you can give it the Macho Brace, and what it'll do is it'll actually scale its stats down to your maximum badge level. So I believe if you have no badges, you can control up to, I think, level 15. You can catch the Garchomp, you can give it the Macho Brace, and it'll have the stats of a level 15 Garchomp. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Now that's kind of bounced because you only get one Macho Brace, and your Pokemon is not being buffed by an item, right? It's being nerfed by the Macho Brace. But it's just a really great quality of life feature that gives you unprecedented freedom in team building. You really can use any Pokemon you want. I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> you think they'd add a cool mechanic like that? There's no such thing. I'm lying to your face. Just like Game Freak did when they said that you could go anywhere and do anything. Well, did they really lie? Actually, you can challenge the gyms in any order. You can, but you'll get destroyed because this open world game has no level scaling. So there is actually a set circuit that you're supposed to follow, and it's very intuitive. You'll see it on screen now. Honestly, if you don't figure out this route on your own, what's wrong with you? You must just not be very good at video games. Now, Nurse Joy actually gives you hints on where to go next, but she'll just direct you to the nearest event. Doesn't matter if you're under level or over level, she'll just say, oh, this is over here, you should go there. So if you go to the ice gym first, she'll just say like, oh yeah, it's over there, and then you'll get destroyed. Great, I guess she just wants to drive more business to the Pokemon Center. Corrupt pharmaceutical industry. This must be a fantasy game. I think the Macho Brace actually would be a very cool what if, but no. By the way, if I ever tell you anything that's like, oh wow, cool, I can't believe they added that, they didn't add it. I'm lying to you. Let's talk about stone evolutions, because those are important. So stone evolutions in previous games were balanced by how they affected your move pool. So Pokemon that evolved with a stone obviously evolve by having stone used on them, so they don't need a prerequisite level, and they immediately get a massive boost in stats. The balance for this was that you would no longer learn new moves by level up, with the exception of the Eevees, who are intended to evolve immediately by stones. In this game, there's a new move relearning feature. They ripped it out of Arceus. Wish they ripped off other features like a functioning lock-on, but because you can relearn moves as soon as you evolve with a stone, there's no longer a penalty. In fact, it's been inverted. Inverse battles aren't in this game, by the way. It's been inverted, and now it's an advantage. So stone Pokemon are just super busted. <laughs> Because you can also go and get static spawns of the stone somewhere in the overworld pretty much right away. So I think pretty much any stone evolution gets a massive boost based on that. There's an auto battle mechanic in this game. I'm not counting it, it's kind of pointless and you barely get any XP from it. Now because this is a 100 yen store JRPG, it has friendship mechanics. Some Pokemon evolve through friendship, and you can raise friendship really easily in this game. Just having Pokemon in your party, walking around with them, or making sandwiches, yeah. which you're going to be doing a whole lot, raises friendship. Uh, and once you're good friends with them, they can evolve. So I'm going to consider friendship evolutions as close to immediate. And I mentioned you can raise friendship by walking around. Some other Pokemon evolve specifically by walking around with them. I think there's three in the game. I'm also going to consider those evolutions as pretty much instant because there's no reason not to get them right away. I mean, it's a little bit annoying, but you can do it in like five minutes. Speaking of friends, you need friends to trade with in this game for certain trade evolutions. Now, normally, I don't penalize trade evolutions because I assume somehow you can get them. Either you're playing on very official and legal hardware that has not been modified to allow you to get them through level ups, or there's just some sort of internet infrastructure that lets you do that. I think this game we have to consider differently because evolutions are actually paid content. Now, if you have a friend in real life who is next to you 
and also got scammed by paying for this game, yeah, I guess you can trade with them. Otherwise, you have to pay for a completely separate online service. And you might not be able to do that. So I think we have to actually penalize trade evolutions. Now you can still obtain some trade evolutions in raid dens, which is a great segue into us saying we're not going to consider raid dens because they are incredibly random. And I don't really think we can account for that in here. So maybe you get a really powerful Pokemon early on in a raid den, or more likely you don't, so I can't consider that. By the way, I'm not considering version exclusives as actually exclusive. I'm sort of assuming that you're playing a super game that has every Pokemon available, as if they didn't just rip the game in half and sell you it separately, because they can, because you will buy it, consume. Can you tell that I don't like this game? Now the main gimmick of Generation 9 is the new Terrastralize mechanic, which allows you to change your typing. Maybe. So actually interesting different Terra typings are tied to encountering Pokemon in specific raids which you have no control over, but every Pokemon has the base ability to terrestrialize into at least one of their existing types. And when you do this, which you can do once per Pokut Center visit, you gain 50% more damage on your Terra type moves. Cool. This is a really minor bonus that I think applies equally to every Pokemon, so we can go ahead and just factor it out. Bet you didn't know this was a math class. We are going to be talking about school, by the way. Using some very intentional and carefully programmed mechanics, you can actually skip school in this game. But I'm not going to count that because obviously you are intended to just go to school. It doesn't take very long and that unlocks the open world aspect of the game. So I'm not going to consider Pokemon that are available early because you played hooky and skipped school. Truant bad ability. However, I am actually going to consider bugs because some bugs do affect the Pokemon you can obtain in a way that I think is fair. Specifically Houndour, more on that later. Abilities have existed since Gen 3, but in Generation 5, they added a wonderful mechanic called Hidden Abilities. It's not actually wonderful. It's really, 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 really annoying where certain Pokemon have certain abilities that cannot be accessed normally. You can obtain Hidden Abilities in this game in two ways. You can either get them in raids, so for the purposes of this tier list, you can't get them. Or you can use a special item called the Ability Patch that will change one of your basic abilities to your hidden ability. Now some Pokemon are way, way, way stronger with their hidden ability, but you can't actually get the Ability Patch in your normal playthrough. So unfortunately for this tier list, hidden abilities are not considered because you cannot get the Ability Patch. You also can't get a normal patch that actually fixes the game and makes it worth your money. So don't hold your breath waiting for that. Now, although it sounds like we're really, really tryharding, because this is supposed to be an in-game playthrough where you're just, you know, fighting the Pokemon you have to, I'm actually not going to consider breeding for like perfect IVs or getting correct natures, which you can fix with mints anyway, or specifically, doing any EV training. So you can defeat certain Pokemon to increase your stats in certain ways, is the simple way to explain it. And this does affect some Pokemon more than others. And I'm considering that you are not doing EV training. There's an important concept in these tier lists called opportunity cost. So when you're doing something, you could be doing something else. And that's opportunity cost. How it applies to the list is experience. So if you're training one Pokemon, that means you're not training other Pokemon. Giving a Pokemon XP is an investment. So Pokemon that require less XP to be good are better, is what I would say, except of course, this game has permanent party-wide experience share. So there really is no cost to training Pokemon. Pokemon like Magikarp that are completely useless until you invest experience in them to get out of their dud stage, well, there is no dud stage. <laughs> you can just make them good by fighting with better Pokemon until Magikarp is ready to evolve early on and then just take over the rest of the game. Very fair and balanced. 
And this party-wide experience share makes it so that Pokemon that have dud stages or that require XP to become useful, they're still going to get slightly penalized. Like for example, a Pokemon like Larvitar that eventually gets really strong, I'm gonna have to knock down a few pegs. Uh, but Pokemon with shorter dud stages uh, can pretty much just skip entirely to their powered up forms. And of course, the meta opportunity cost of playing this game would be that you're not playing another better game, which is almost any game out there. You could also just like go outside. You could talk to your friends. Why are you playing this game? I don't know, man. I'm kind of having fun with the game. How about this? Are you still having fun if I ban you? I'm not actually going to ban you. I personally really hated this game, viscerally hated this game. One of the worst experiences of my life, the game itself. The streams were fun though. I'm curious why exactly you dislike this game so much, a 2 out of 10 if they fix all the glitch and performance issues you've called it, what makes the gameplay and story that bad? Uh, please wait for my review video. In short, this game is so far below what I expect from a AAA title, there's no way for me to say this in less than like two hours. And just to be super explicit, YouTube don't ban me, my personal opinions on designs do not factor at all into the into the rankings. I'll mention them. I'll mention how Paladin Quagsire is the cutest thing ever, and I love it. But my heart doesn't speak in these lists, okay? Paladin Quagsire is really bad. So what are the actual tiers? We can see here we've called them Area 1, Area 2, Area 3, Area C, Area 4, Paldea's Finest, and Area 0. Now you might be thinking, wow, these are some really bland and uninspired names for tiers. You really couldn't think of anything else to say? Sorry, I'm just a small indie YouTuber, okay? I don't have time to come up with unique names. Surely the most profitable franchise of all time would have, in their open world game all about exploring, given unique names and locations to places to make them more memorable. Who can forget when you first walked out into the open field and saw the pop-up on your screen? Area 1. So what do the tiers actually mean? So Area 1, you might normally know this as S tier. These are the very, very best Pokemon in the game. If you're not using them, you need a good reason. Good reasons include, I don't like them. That's pretty much the only reason you wouldn't use these Pokemon. <laughs> They're busted. Pokemon in Area 2 are very solid. I would say I recommend them. They have some sort of weakness, most likely that you can't get them early enough, or you can get them, but they require investment before they actually become good. But eventually, they do become good. You should consider putting them on your team. Pokemon in Area 3, I'm gonna say, are average. You can use them if you want, but I don't think they're particularly outstanding in any way. Right below Area 3, is Area C. It's a lot of water types that are pretty much interchangeable. Water's a good type. I don't have much to say about these Pokemon. You've probably seen them before and they're all interchangeable. You can use them if you want. I don't know why you would want to though. Area four is where I would consider Pokemon to be bad. <laughs> I'm not going to say unsalvageable, but there's no reason to use these Pokemon unless you want to try and challenge yourself. Pokemon in Area 4, I would say actively drag your team down. So they have to be carried by the Pokemon in higher areas. And although it's not the visually lowest tier, Paldea's Finest is actually the lowest tier in this game. If you're in Paldea's Finest, that's a special honor. That's me saying you are actually beyond salvation. You cannot be salvaged. You're just horrible, pure meme. But we are inclusive. You don't actually need to be a native Paldean Mon to be a part of Paldea's finest. So get your tropium ready. And at the very bottom, we have area zero. These are for Pokemon that I consider to be so late into the adventure that they really can't be ranked. So most of the Pokemon in Area Zero are literally from Area Zero, which is at the very end of the game. But a couple other Pokemon I think are just not in enough of the game for me to actually consider ranking them. I don't want to call them bad because they're not necessarily bad. They're just not usable. So they're going to be in Area Zero. You can sort of consider that untiered. 
We're almost ready to start ranking Pokemon. Crazy, I know. Just one comment on formatting. If we're talking about a new Paldean Pokemon that premiered this game, we're actually gonna go to its stats page and show all of its stats and possibly look at its move pool. Because I imagine that many of you watching are not familiar with the minutia of all these new Pokemon. If it's a returning Pokemon from a previous generation, we won't do that. Now, people often accuse me of being biased against grass types. I don't know where they get that idea from. It's not like I made a video specifically talking about how grass is really bad. Don't call me biased when I put this cat in area one. We're talking about the best grass type starter since Bulbasaur in generation one. For the exact same reason, because this guy gets gen one razor leaf. So what made Razor Leaf super busted in Generation 1 was that because of certain well-made bugged mechanics, it always, always crit. And Meowth's Karada in this game gets Flower Trick? Leaf Blade in shambles. Leaf Blade has high crit. Flower Trick always crits. Very fair and balanced. I actually mean that it is very fair and balanced because it's a grass type move, unfortunately. And that is Meowskarada's greatest weakness. It's a grass type. <laughs> now looking at these stats, you should be impressed because these are pretty much perfect starter stats. 123 speed, so you're going first, and you are hitting them hard with 110 base attack. Your move pool is also pretty good. Uh, you've got your flower trick. Uh, you've got good dark stab in the form of night slash. You can play rough with them, and you could always style on them with some acrobatics for your fourth move. You might also consider using U-Turn so that you can switch without penalty, uh, because this game actually removed the option for switch mode. Uh, which is a nice way to make sort of the entire game more difficult and force you to uh, adapt to what your enemy has. Just kidding, of course, they did the opposite and they removed set mode! <laughs> now, if you could actually get the Giga OP Protean hidden ability, this would be like S plus tier, but unfortunately you cannot. Also, Protean actually got nerfed in this game and it now only changes your type the first time you attack per time you're out on the field. Still really good ability, but not under consideration for this list. I think I mentioned Flower Trick before, but we're we'll talking a little bit more about it. So Flower Trick auto crits and it also auto hits. Now the auto hit part of that is basically the same as 100 accuracy. It only ever applies if the opponent boosts their evasion or lowers your accuracy, neither of which happens very often. The auto crit part is not quite as good as it sounds because remember this is post gen six, so crits have been nerfed. They're not double damage, they're 1.5. Overall, it ends up being about the same power as the Gen 1 Razor Leaf. The other benefit of crits, though, is that they always bypass your opponent's defensive boosts, and they also bypass your own offensive drops. So how that's actually relevant to in-game is, say, if you get intimidated, which is everywhere, and you flower trick them, it's as if you didn't get intimidated. Tricked! Overall, really good Pokemon, one of the best starters ever. Too bad it's a grass type. Ugh. Also, it's the magician Pokemon, but it's a physical attacker. Okay. Fue Coco. Best Paldean starter? Maybe. This thing's crazy. Biased? No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm not biased. I'm, I'm not biased at all. How'd you get in the frame? Stats wise, uh, 66 base speed. That's kind of bad. <laughs> Generally, what you need to go first. If you're overleveled, which you almost certainly will be in this game, is 80 base speed. That's what I'm considering fast enough. So I'm gonna say that Skeledurge here is too slow. However, he's not that slow, right? He will still go first a good portion of the time if you're overleveled. And if he goes first, your opponent is dead because his signature move, Torch Song, might be one of the best moves in Pokemon history. It is unfair. So Torch Song is 80 base power, fire type move, 100% accuracy, and it increases your special attack by one every time you use it. You may have heard of Fiery Dance. It's just better than Fiery Dance. Fiery Dance gives you the boost 50% of the time. Torch Song gives you it 100% of the time. What? Also, this game is very, very kind to fire types. Fire types absolutely destroy like 90% of the fights in this game, and there's nothing your opponent can do about it except sit there and get torched. Let me sing you the song of my people. Die! 
Skeledurge's awful speed can also be patched up by giving it a, a nifty choice scarf. You actually can buy choice scarf before the post game. Now choice scarf of course locks you into one move, but Torch Song kills everything anyway, so you may as well do it. As for moves other than Torch Song, I guess you could use Earth Power and obviously your secondary stab, Shadow Ball. I don't really know what you would run for your fourth move. Maybe Flame Charge to patch up your speed, but you don't really need a fourth move. Honestly, you don't even need a second move or a third move, you just need Torch Song. And it doesn't really matter for this list, but you'll notice here that we can't actually learn Yawn. So for the most part, you can move Reminder any move that you can learn, but for whatever reason, if that move is no longer in your move pool because you evolved, so for example, Fue Coco can learn Yawn, but Skeledridge cannot, if you ever forget Yawn, you can never again relearn it. I think one of the most glaring instances of this is Shroomish learns Spore at level 40, but Breloom never learns Spore. So you can't just evolve into Breloom, go to level 40, and then relearn Spore. You have to actually learn it as Shroomish, and then if you ever forget it after you evolve, you can't relearn it. Really weird how it works like that, but it doesn't actually affect Fue Coco at ever. Why are you yawning? You're too busy singing and killing! This Pokemon is so good, I have a feeling that if you want to be a straight A student, you might want to pick this guy. Stay tuned! Oh. Also, you'll notice that there's glare on my camera from the sun, and sun powers up Fue Coco. It's all part of the plan. If you want to complain about the lighting in this video, how about you complain about the lighting in the game first, okay? Terra Lighting Bug. Quaxly! probably has the worst signature move out of these three in the form of Aqua Step, which is still probably one of the best moves in the entire game. Very fair and balanced. What? Good Pokemon! Now Quaxley's stats here are pretty good. 120 base attack is enough to kill pretty much anything, and 85 base speed is enough to outspeed most, but not everything. But you will outspeed everything after you step on him. So Aqua Step is your signature move, it's 80 base power, so same as Waterfall, and instead of a 20% chance to flinch, it raises your speed by 1. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Water fighting, insanely good stab combo. What other moves are you going to be using? You've got pretty much everything you need. You, get, you can get in there close with some close combat. You can use acrobatics uh, for some good 110 flying coverage. And specifically, the other move I would put in your last slot would be Ice Spinner, which does take a while to actually obtain. You can get it guaranteed from the Ice type gym leader, but I think you can also find the TM before then. Uh, that's every move you need to demolish pretty much all of the game. Uh, the only reason that I'm putting this below Skeledurge is because Torch Song is so insane that you can just turn your brain off and completely run through almost every fight in the game. And sometimes with Quackable, you might actually have to choose a different move. Now, if you actually got its hidden ability Moxie, this would probably be the best in-game starter ever. But unfortunately, you can't in-game. Too bad. I think specifically for the starters, we will mention their matchups against the early gyms, because that is where your starter's power is the most important. So Sprigatito gets bodied by the first gym, which is Bug, and then is whatever against the second gym, because that's Grass. Quaxley actually beats both because he has Wing Attack, hey! Although I guess it's technically weak to the Grass one, but who cares, Grass sucks. And Fui Coco, of course, it destroys both. Good boy. Oh, ho, ho. Most of Sprigatito's issues can just be summarized as, it's a grass type. If you ported its stats onto the other stars, it would probably be the best. Now before we talk about Lechonk, we have to talk about filler Pokemon. So normally in all of these lists, Pokemon get extra credit if there's nothing else you could be using. So a lot of the early game garbage like Raticate actually ends up ranking more highly than like late game powerhouses because these Pokemon are available so early and like, what else are you gonna do? Well, in this list in particular, there's a lot of answers to what else are you gonna do? So filler Pokemon, I don't think, get a bonus, which means we just have to consider it based on how strong the Pokemon actually is. And also, just a disclaimer, rankings are gonna be really harsh because you can get so many super powerful Pokemon super early that the overall power level is just 
through the roof. All of that being said, I think that LeChonk sinks to Area 4. My question for you, and one that I'm going to repeat a lot throughout this list, is why are you using this Pokemon? So, Oink Cologne, the evolved form, actually has different stats for male and female. The male one is just better because it has more attack, but it still doesn't have that much. It has 100, and we got 65 base speed. And it is a pure normal type, which is atrocious. In general, you want to be dual typed because dual type means you have a wider move pool and you have two stab types. This Pokemon only has one stab type, and it's one of the worst ones in the entire game. Hooray! The best thing I can say about Oink Cologne is that it evolves early. You'll get these stats at level 18, which is okay, but there are so many better things you could be doing. In terms of ability, it does actually get a brand new ability, Lingering Om Aroma, which is a carbon copy of Mummy. It just overwrites your opponent's ability. I don't think there's a single point in the game where that ever really matters. Certainly not a scenario where you would use LeChonk because you need to overwrite their ability. In terms of moves, you get Stab Normal. Bullet Seed, okay, is that Headbutt? Oh, nothing exciting enough to warrant consideration for this Pokemon. Also, the Headbutt animation is just a shoulder tackle. I would call that really lazy, but I'm sure it's just a reference to the fact that the shoulder of a pig is actually like the butt. That's definitely what they meant, right? It's not just a lazy animation. Yeah. Now the best part about LeChonk and one aspect of the game where it is indispensable is in the sandwich making minigame, which you're going to be doing a lot. And a lot of the sandwiches you can't make without the cooperation of our friend LeChonk. Cooperation. Oh, have a good time and find your love? Well, I don't know if you guys are going to find love here, but hopefully you're having a good time. Banned. <laughs> An another one? Hello? We attracted the bots with sweet scents. Banned. Wow, I thought they removed double battles from this game. <laughs> If you're watching the premium, we just had a double battle with some bots <laughs> that we defeated, which I think is an opportunity to say that this game is pretty much only single battles, hot singles in U-City. So double battle abilities and double battle mechanics, for the most part, don't get considered. There's only five double battles in the entire game, and three of them are practically un unlosable. There's no horde battles. There's no triple battles, there's no rotation battles, there's no fun. Now, of course, I'm only talking about the main game, so once you get to the post game, there's lots of extensive battle facilities that allow you to test out a lot of fun combat. I mean, I'm, I'm blatantly lying, right? You figured that out already, I'm sorry. Agent Spite Ops, this is Colonel Bugcatcher. Do you read me? You don't have the base stats. Move pool or typing to operate in Area Zero. You turn out of there immediately. That's an order. Spydops, can you hear me? <coughs> Spydops, are you all right? Spydops, Spydops, Spydops! I mentioned earlier, you don't actually have to be from Paldea to be in Paldea's finest. But Agent Spidops here is Paldea's finest. No questions asked. Call of Duty Spidops. And I do mean duty. We can just call it right now. I don't know if this is the worst Pokemon in the entire game, but this is definitely, without a doubt, the worst new Pokemon in this game. Remember Ariados? Remember how it's got horrible typing, horrible stats, horrible moves. Just awful. Imagine being worse than Ariados! Horrible typing! Horrible stats! Actually, pretty good moves. Ariados, a famously horrible Pokemon, but you might consider using it at least temporarily, because, like, what else are you gonna do? And at least it's got two stabs, even if one of those is the worst stab in the game in the form of poison, and the other one is the second worst stab in the game in the form of bug. With Spidops, you don't even get that! You get pure bug! But at least the stats are good. Oh, what is this? You 
you can literally see stat total 404 viability not found you're never going first you're never doing any damage you're never surviving a hit why are you using this pokemon I'm not even going to call it a saving grace, but the only part of Spydops that's not just offensively bad is its move pool, because eventually you get some moves that actually might maybe do something. So you get Leech Life, which this is the buffed Leech Life, so 80 base power stab and it heals you, but everything resists bugs, so it's actually 40 base power. Throw Chop is okay, I guess. Brick Break is okay, I guess. I'm not sure I would consider this Pokemon a complete laughing stock in competitive because I think it can set both sticky web and it can set spikes, which might be useful. But they're not useful in game, so that doesn't count. It does have stab U turn to allow you to more easily switch to a better Pokemon. I hope for your sake that your spy agency doesn't rely on this guy. Spy Dops goes in the spy dump. Something I'll just explain here is you might notice that some of these icons are really small. Uh, specifically for a lot of the new Pokemon, and that's because I'm not yet able to get official high-res art of the Pokemon, so I had to use their icons, which is why they're, they're kind of tiny. It's just being realistic, because something that happens to you a lot in this game is that you'll just run into teeny tiny Pokemon that you can't see, or you'll run into the air where nothing is, and it'll still start a battle. Great game that they definitely bug tested. Speaking of small Pokemon and bugs, this guy evolves into low kicks. It's got low in the name, but it's a high tier Pokemon. This thing is actually pretty good. I don't know if it's area one good, but I'm thinking we can at least say it is area two good. Now Nimble, the unevolved form, is really bad. <laughs> Do not ever use Nimble, but it doesn't take that long, level 24, until you get up into low kicks. And low kicks, look at this, pretty good. 92 speed, fast enough, 102 attack, not spectacular, but good enough. You get two stabs, unfortunately one is bug, but dark is also pretty good. And if you could get tinted lens, this guy might actually be area one, like barely. But I think because you're stuck with swarm, unfortunately, we're gonna cap this thing out at area two. Once you get two low kicks, there is probably one move you can select that is going to kill your opponent. You can chop him in the throat. You can leave a good first impression. You can ax him. You can bounce. Probably won't be using bounce. Stab leech life, that's all right. Lots to love about this bug. And also it gets some of the very best kicking animations in the entire game, which isn't saying much, but they are pretty cool. And the moment it evolves from nimble into low kicks, it gets lunge, which is a decent move. I really don't know why it's a bug move though. And the animation also makes no sense. I'd say definitely consider common Rider for your team, but unfortunately with this typing and these stats, you are going to miss out on some kills and there are some bad matchups. Hopip, a grass type that specializes in the grassiest of strategies, stalling your opponent forever. It's not from Paldea, it's our ambassador from Johto's Finest. This thing is useless. It goes first, it puts your opponent to sleep, and then it puts you to sleep. The player, if you weren't already asleep playing this awful game. Horrible, why are you doing this? Skip Loom, more like skip this Pokemon, a good comment. This thing might actually be worse than Spydops because Spydops actually gets okay attacking moves and this thing doesn't. Congratulations Spydops, mission successful. You beat one of the worst Pokemon in the game. One positive for Hopup is that, because of the lovingly crafted animations of this game, in strong winds, light Pokemon like Hopup and Jigglypuff get blown away, but the animations are so bad that it looks like a bug, even though it's intended. So depending on how much you shill for Game Freak, either that's a lovingly crafted detail, or it's just jank that they should have just cut instead of trying to stuff into the game clumsily. Guess which camp I'm in. Somebody said, oh, but Jump Bluff gets stab acrobatics. 55 attack. Next. 69mega.com? Megas are back, guys. Finally, I knew it. <laughs> I knew they'd bring Megas back. Good job, mods. Can we, can we keep track of how many bots we've banned this stream? It's like five already, right? 
Talonflame, The Menace of Generation 6, and Mascot of Pokemon Brave Bird Edition. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Uh, the attack stat is just really disappointing. And also the Talonflame evolution is fairly late. It's not bad. I think this is probably going to be a high Area 3 Pokemon. One of the most useful things about it is that it gets Flame Body once it evolves into Fletchinder. And it's one of your earliest Flame Body users, so that's an easy way to help you hatch your eggs, which is something you might want to do at some point. It just doesn't have the damage to kill most things, which is unfortunate. But Fire Flying, I hear, is a pretty good typing. Not that I'm biased. <laughs> You can't actually get its super busted Gale Wings ability in this game because it is the hidden ability, but it doesn't really matter for two reasons. One, it's super nerfed, so it only operates if you're at full health, which probably won't be because your best moves have recoil. And two, you're faster anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Palmot, this generation's Pikachu clone, it turns out if you start on four legs, you can sign a Dark Pact, become bipedal, become really good. Area 1, did you see that coming? Now paw me, the first form, you can get at the very beginning of the game. It sucks. <laughs> but you only have to get it to level 18. Once you get it to level 18, you can evolve into paw mo, which is apparently not this thing. However, paw mo is our very first instance of a let's go evolution. So all you have to do is walk with it outside of your Pokeball for a thousand steps, which sounds like a lot, but you can do it in like five minutes. And once you do that, you just level it up one more time. I think you actually have to use like an XP candy to do that, but like they're everywhere. No problem there. Use an XP candy. It gets like a little bit of extra hair and it gets a lot of extra stats. Look at this. Electric fighting dual typing. You get some seriously good stab. This is a good Pokemon. 115 attack, that's great. 105 speed, that's great. These other stats, you know, they're not great, but who cares? <laughs> now we have a generous donation from Prada with an O with some fake news. Don't be fooled. The let's go mechanic is terrible. Those 1000 steps need to be in one trip, but your Pokemon will go back to its ball for the dumbest reasons. Now I agree that your Pokemon will go back to the ball for the dumbest reasons, but those thousand steps, don't have to be in one trip. They definitely don't. I, I just tested this. It's that you have to do an overworld evolution, which is tricky because if you level up through the let's go mechanic, you don't actually evolve. You have to get close to leveling up. The Pokemon has to be out of the ball and then you give it an XP candy to level up and then it'll evolve. So very tricky, very unintuitive. But if you, if you know what to do, it's not that bad. But if you believe that those 1000 steps have to be consecutive, which they don't, you can cheese this by standing on top of a Pokemon Center and having a uh, paw me below you and it'll just keep like walking in place. If you just do that for a little bit, it'll get the thousand steps you need. It actually gets some pretty decent moves. Close combat. Yeah, I'd consider that a decent move. But you can get some other weaker fighting moves earlier than that. It is a physical electric type, which is usually a feels bad moment, but it at least gets a unique signature move, Double Shock, which is basically the electric version of Burn Up, where it then removes your electric typing afterwards. So that's a bit of a downside, but hey, 120 base power, I'd use that. You can break some bricks. You can enter the elemental punch out circuit. You can seed bomb. You've got options. The hands-on Pokemon. He's taken this playthrough into his own hands. He's gonna fight for you. Fun fact, the game softlocks itself if a pure electric type uses double shock and then you look at the summary screen. Is that a fun fact? Apparently, if you Terra to electric and then double shock, the downside of double shock where you lose your electric type doesn't apply. Cool. <laughs> now, depending on your in-game rules, I know that a lot of people like to play with no items, Palmod might actually get extra credit because this Pokemon is based on like a defibrillator. So it actually gets a special move that allows it to revive your other Pokemon. So that is actually one of the only ways to revive your Pokemon in battle without using items. Pretty cool. Houndour. It's been over two decades. Finally. Justice for Houndour. It's actually in the game. And it is actually the first dog of eight that you can get in the game. 
<laughs> now, the early availability comes with a bit of a caveat. You have to cheat because it's in a cave that you can only backtrack to once you get high jump or climbing. Except this is a great game that's very well programmed. You can just Skyrim your way up the slope into the cave by jumping backwards. Or if you want to play Zelda instead of Skyrim, you can hookshot by throwing your Pokeball at one of the Fletchlings on the ledge and it'll warp you up there. And then you can get a Houndor at basically the beginning of the game. Only has to get to level 24 to evolve into Houndoom. Amazing stats. 90 base speed is good enough. And I think 110 special attack also good enough. Dark fire stab, amazing. Good dog. Probably gonna be very bottom of area one near the end of this, but excellent. 95 base speed, even better than I thought. I'm getting conflicting reports. You may or may not be able to get this without glitches, but either way, you can get it really early. It's definitely funnier to get it with glitches, but you might also be able to just like jump off the cliff nearby. Child jumps off a cliff to acquire dog. Streamer doesn't have to do anything to acquire bots in the chat. 69mega.com. Look, we found a girl for you. What's the count now? Six? Mods! <laughs> now, because power creep is kind of out of control in this game, you might argue that Houndor actually goes at the top of area two. He might by the end of this, but I think for his years of dedicated service, I think we can go ahead and say Houndour is like bottom of area one. Come on, he's a good dog. The people of Paldea, listen to me. Paldea first. Paldea first. People often say that normal is not a good type. You haven't seen anything yet. I get stab on normal moves. That means if my attack would have done 100 damage, if I use it instead, it's gonna do 150. Look at the opponent's health bar. Is it green now? After I attack, it's gonna go down. It's green now, I attack, it's gonna be yellow, and then it's gonna keep going down. It's gonna go to red, it might even go to gray. That means they've got no health. They fainted, come on, put me on your team. Put me on your team. Who else would you even consider? I've got this election for a spot on your team in the bag. Stop the count. This thing is so bad. <laughs> Why would you ever use this? This thing is filler to the max in a game where being a filler Pokemon is worthless. Horrible typing, horrible stats, pretty bad move pool. But hey, I hear you can buy some premium gumshoes NFTs now. Don't want to miss this investment opportunity. Now 110 attack, just this number is actually pretty good. What about this? Normal. What about this? Slow. What about this? Frail. Paldea's finest. 45 speed for the 45th president. But what about strong jaw? Well, you can do strong jaw stab hyperfang, right? It's no hyperfang in this game. Whoops. But you can eventually strong jaw boost crunch. That's in your learn set. And if you find the TMs, you can do the elemental fangs and you can do psychic fangs as well. You also died before you ever got to act, so it's not like it really matters. It's better in Sun and Moon because it actually does act as a filler Pokemon and it does get hyper fang. Sad. I think it's a low area four at worst. Fine. We'll put it at the very bottom of area four. Don't accuse me of bias. So Squavit, completely useless, normal early game filler. That's probably still better than Young Goose. Let's be clear, it's awful. But let's take a look at the stats. Mono normal, wow. Oh, look at that, okay, decent bulk. Bulk is useless. 20 speed, garbage moves. Another bot appeared, said, have already found love with us. Let me tell you now, I haven't found love with this thing. Horrible. Let's hear it for bot number seven. So while Gumshoes goes second and dies before doing anything, Squavit, with its base 20 speed, goes second, probably doesn't die, and then still does barely anything in return. That's still very bad but it's probably more than you're getting out of gumshoes. And the difference between 20 base speed and 45 base speed is basically nothing. They both may as well be zero. 
So we're going to have them both at the very bottom of Area 4 for now, but I'm not a Tyranitar, okay? We're gonna let democracy speak. So if you're here in the live, you have the power to vote. Should these two be at the bottom of Area 4, or should they be among the ranks of Paldea's finest? You have the power. The people have spoken. With 69% of the vote, nice. Paldea's finest. You want to put Paldea first? Well, you should probably go to the tier with Paldea in the name. Stop the count! <laughs> Illegitimate poll! Sunkern. Sunkern has literally the worst stats in the entire game, aside from solo form wishy-washy. However, it is a stone evolution, which means that you can find a sunstone, evolve it immediately, at which point you get Sunflora, who's still really bad. But this is also the first ever double stone evolution. Hit with a fire stone after that, and you become Sunflourish, the very first grass fire type with chlorophyll, which means that under the sun, you move faster, you get stab solar beam, you get stab fire. Nothing cool ever happens. There is no sun flourish. This thing is saved from Paldea's finest by being a stone evo. If you immediately get stoned, it's just really bad. I don't know what else to say about this. It's a pure grass type. If it's not sunny, this thing is completely useless. Okay, people are saying it actually goes in Paldea's finest. I'm not gonna argue. Plant a seed in a low tier and perhaps someday, however many generations in the future, it'll sprout into a plant that's actually usable. Speaking of usable plants, some people may think of me as the villain, but the true villain is the Scovillain. So Sun Flourish is kind of real, because you can get a Pokemon in this game called Capsicid. If you Firestone that one, it does actually evolve into the very first Fire Grass type, which does get super benefit from Chlorophyll, because it gets faster, you can use Stab Solar Beam, and you get stab fire. It also actually gets flamethrower the moment you evolve it into Scovillain. And because it's a stone evolution, you do that right away. Now these stats are actually quite reasonable. A 108 in both offenses is actually good. Uh, for reference, your friend Monkey okay. from Gen 4 has less than this, and he's considered a good mixed attacker. 75 speed is a bit disappointing, but I would say that if you want to use this Pokemon, you should actually spend one turn to set up the sun, because then you're definitely going to be faster, and you're almost certainly going to kill the opponent with either Stab Sun Boosted Fire, or if you want to, you can Solar Beam. Now, this Pokemon gets a unique move called Spicy Extract. And initially, how I thought Spicy Extract worked was because this is a two-headed Pokemon, that one head would sort of buff you with plus two attack, and the other head would debuff the opponent with minus two defense. So it's Sword Stance and Screech, which makes this thing an absolute physical terror. It's a double battle-specific move. It's basically a version of Swagger that you're supposed to use on your teammate to make them stronger, but also more vulnerable to attack. But there are a total of five double battles in the entire game, so that move is completely useless. We also have to consider that this Pokemon, because it specifically wants to use Sun and benefits probably the most out of anyone from Sun, that there are overworld weather mechanics. So yesterday, I did the rematch against the water type gym leader. I went into the gym building to start the rematch. And then when the rematch actually started, there was an overworld sandstorm. And for whatever reason, if there's overworld weather, your weather moves cannot change it. So I went into the battle fully intending to show off this Pokemon, and through no fault of my own, because I'm not a weatherman, suddenly, my entire strategy just doesn't work. Is this just a persistent sandstorm for the entire battle? Aqua Jet, Volt and Veluza, he got us. Oh, Drizzle, but it failed? because of the environmental sandstorm? So is is it always a sandstorm in this battle? Because I intended to sunny beam with hot ones. That's why I have, is that not gonna work? I don't have another grass, what? Hurricane, that's gonna do a lot of damage. That might actually kill us. Oh, we're fine. Great synergy between failing drizzle and then getting hurricane. Is the BGM the actual gym music or is it custom? This is the actual gym music. Uh, so there's actually different themes for each gym leader if you do the rematches. By the way, I also lied to your face about the music. Uh, I'm playing it. 
I turn the game music off, and um, I put it in. If I ever tell you anything that actually sounds cool, it's not actually in the game. Oh, great XP menu. Look at this! The XP menu goes right over the... <laughs> Batten down the hatches and prepare for a storm. That's what makes battling exciting. I don't know if you noticed, man, but we've been in a storm this entire time. Now there's no sandstorm. So maybe now we can actually sunnybeam. So there's no sandstorm, right? You don't- there, you guys also see there's no sandstorm. We're going to use Sunny Day. Don't worry, we're gonna Sunny Beam him. Sunny Day! It failed. Please tell me why it failed. Game Freak, tell me. Here's the sandstorm that's buffeting me. Great game. My whole plan for this gym completely ruined by this bizarre, never-before-seen mechanic of perpetual sandstorm at the water gym. And there's no workaround for this, it's not like you can predict this. There's just a chance that in a certain battle, you can't use weather. Great. Awesome game. And another note about overworld weather? You can't wait it out. Even if the weather stops occurring on the overworld, if there's no weather effect, the weather effects themselves still persist. It's very confusing and unintuitive. Diddly whoop! Absolute best cry in the series. Makes you cry when you try to use it. This thing's horrible. I hope you enjoyed Cricketod in the Dipa remake and Legends Arceus. It's back in this game. It's a Cricketod. It's terrible. It evolves really early. So you can get its Cricketoon stats, which are nothing to write home about. 65 base speed, 85 base attack. But before it gets outclassed by other Pokemon, I guess you could try using it. I say before it gets outclassed, as if it's not outclassed the moment you obtain it. Diddly whoop. More like diddly womp. Womp. Sad. Scatterbug. You like Butterfree? Well, too bad, because Butterfree's not in this game. But you get Scatterbug, which is just Butterfree plus. What a title. So this is an early game bug that actually does kind of stay barely sort of relevant throughout the game. And the early game power spike actually is kind of useful. Evolves early, and you've got Compound Eye Sleep Powder, and eventually Compound Eye Sleep Powder Quiver Dance Hurricane. That's not nothing. Now, one of the defining features of Vivillion in particular is that it has a bunch of different patterns based on the region that it was caught. And by region, I mean like your physical region, like in the planet Earth. So it's just a nice bit of extra personality that this line of Pokemon gets. And there's no way that they would remove that in a game that has online connectivity, right? That would allow you to collect all the Vivillions really easily. They wouldn't remove it. They removed it. And I say it has online connectivity. It's not like it actually has a global trade system yet, because that's been ripped out of the game, later to be incorporated into Pokemon Home, which is split across a mobile app and a separate app in the game. And of course, you need Pokemon Home subscription to fully utilize the service. This game is disgusting. This Pokemon's like, okay though. Also, there's no reason to use Hopip as your sleeper, when Vavillian does that earlier in the game, as in like at an earlier level, with compound eyes, so it also just does it better. Combi. So male Combi are useless because they can never evolve, and most Combi are male. So you have to go through the extra effort of hunting for a female Combi, I think 12% of them. Once you do, and you reach level 21, which isn't that high of a level, you evolve into Vespiquin. Defensive stats with one of the worst ever defensive typings Bug and flying, but its attack is kind of okay. So I think we're just gonna put it very bottom of area four. Also a victim of Dexit, even though it's in the game because they Dexited its signature moves. Why? Didn't want to animate them? It's not as if you animate the moves anyway. Also, I hope you liked this in the Dipa and Legends Pokedex because it's back. I think numbers wise, this actually is a Paldea's finest Pokemon, but you can catch an overworld Vespiquin fairly early. And for that, it's just the bottom of Area 4. How the monarchy has fallen. Tears of the Kingdom. Rookity evolves into Corvus Squire and eventually Corviknight. How powerful do you have to be to be a knight? Not very. Ugh. Really good defensive Pokemon. 
insanely late evolution? It's very bad at killing the opponent, which is what you care about. It's a better Skarmory, but Skarmory's not very good. Like, I know this tiering looks pretty low, but like, look, level 38 to reach Corviknight, and when you get Corviknight, who has a really good type, look, 67 speed, 87 attack? Now, eventually, you can be brave, and you get body press uh, through a TM. You yeah, know, obviously, this thing is very good and competitive, which counts for nothing here, but it has existent offense eventually, which is why it's not in Paldea's finest. You can't one-shot everything in the game and its typing is one of the best in the entire game. You can one-shot everything using these Pokemon. Corviknight is not better than Lechonk. Lechonk you get really early, it's like level 15 or 18, and that's more useful than this. Happiny. Pretty ironic that it has happy in the name, right? Sad. Is this the worst Pokemon in the game? It might be. It's completely useless. It's a purely defensive Pokemon, and only against special Pokemon. At least Hoppip can actually put things to sleep. Happiny. Not happening. At least it has steady employment at the Pokemon centers, right? No? Oh, okay, well, I mean, it's in the nurse's office, right? I mean, this is like the healthcare Pokemon. No? Oh, okay. Also, I hope you liked Happiny in the Dipa and Legends Pokedex, because it's back here. Azuril. So this is actually Azuril in its final form. We've got the dual typing, we've gained fairy. We've got huge power. Is it any good? Not really. So here's the thing, huge power doubles your attack stat, which means that it gets double the benefit from EVs and IVs, which you don't have. So unfortunately, you do not reach your full potential and the speed is really bad. 50 base speed, you are never going first. This is a Pokemon that benefits a lot from specific training that it will not receive in this game. It gets like good moves fairly early and it is a really good type. So I'll, I'll put it like here-ish. People are saying they really like it. It's too slow. 50 base speed is atrocious, but you can use Aqua Jet. 40 base power. But it is good in raids, and it is good if you EV train and IV breed it, which you didn't do in your in-game playthrough, so, no. Like, look at these stats. I know the attack stat gets doubled by huge power, but like, how many times do I have to say this? You don't actually get the full power of huge power, because you're not getting the EVs and IVs in your in-game playthrough. People are going to complain non-stop, so because Azumarill is a really early evolution, we'll put it here, okay? Is that enough? So Surskit. Sometimes Pokemon get stat buffs from Game Freak. Surskit received a 40 stat buff in the best stats. 20 to speed, 20 to special attack. For context, a Mega Evolution is 100 stats. So they basically gave Masquerain half a Mega Evolution for free. And it's still one of the worst Pokemon in the entire series. Sad. It gets Quiver Dance eventually. It gets Intimidate, which is almost good. It actually sees shocking competitive use because in competitive, Intimidate's really good and you can just start with Quiver Dance in the battle. But for your in-game playthrough, no. That's <laughs> what? Sir Skid, more like Sir Skip. It's actually probably better than Combi. I hope you liked Floatzel from the Dipa remake and Legends because it's back in this game. It's really fast and really strong. Do you like water types? Maybe you'd consider using this thing. Probably go first, and it'll probably knock out the opponent. It's a solid area 2 Pokemon. It's also a decently early evolution. I'm just kind of sick of this thing. It keeps showing up everywhere. It's nothing personnel, Floatzel. Floatzel itself is fairly good. I'm trying not to let my biases speak here. In terms of coverage, it's also fairly decent. You can get Crunch, you can get Ice Punch. You can use like two water moves, Aqua Jet in case you need to go really fast, I don't think you will, but you also get Waterfall. Paldean Wooper and Clodzire. This is the cutest thing I've seen in my entire life. It is so cute. <laughs> Japanese Twitter is obsessed with it, as it should be. We've got Takoyaki Clodzire fan art. He's tied to everyone's favorite Twitter waifu in this game. Its Japanese name is also so adorable. Its Japanese name is literally Dole. Because <laughs> it's like Earth King, but it sounds like Doe 
and it also sounds like do for when you mess up. Area one in our hearts. Paldea's finest in the actual game. <laughs> this thing is so bad. So the only saving grace of Quagsire is it has Giga Chad typing, right? The best typing ever. Paldean Quagsire does not. L look at this. J just, just look here, okay? Just look here. Don't, don't, don't look down here, okay? Don't, don't, don't look here. Just, just focus here, okay? I guess in this list we do have to talk about the bad news, which is this. 20 speed, yikes. 75 attack, ah, oh, that's, no. Defensive Pokemon. You definitely want one with Water Absorb. At least you have Stab Earthquake eventually. Level 48, ah. Poison Stab is totally useless. I'm sorry to do this to you, Claude Zyre. Looks don't count for anything in this list. Now you can actually get Jotonian Quagsire in this game. You can trade a Paldean Wooper for a Jotonian Wooper and then evolve it. And Jotonian Quagsire is definitely better. Uh, I would probably put it at the very bottom of Area 3. It still has horrible stats, but its typing is so ridiculously busted that I would probably say that that alone carries it like just barely out of the sea. You can't go that wrong with Water and Ground Stab, but you can go a little wrong. You can go Quagsire amounts of wrong. Psyduck. This one's really easy. Masuda's not the game director, and for all his faults, we can't ever accuse him of favoritism, because even though Psyduck is his favorite Pokemon, Psyduck has never been good. It's a water type, that's about all I can say. Everything good and bad about this Pokemon is because it's a water type. Good availability, catch the very beginning of the game. Why would you use this over one of the other water types? Maybe because it's your favorite Pokemon. Masuda moment. The English name also makes it a lot more confusing that this is not a psychic type. In Japanese, it's just Kodaku, which is like little, little duck. But for whatever reason in English, they added the Psy. Must have been a Psyops operation. Thankfully not Spydops. Also, I hope you enjoyed this thing in Diaper Remake and Legends because it's back in this game. Maybe there is some favoritism at play. Psyduck! More like... Psy... Duck. Very creative. Choodle, are you ready? Good Pokemon? Like before I research for this list, I'm like, ah, oh, like turtle, like slow, right? Not really? So people are shocked in the chat. Prepare to be more shocked. Well, look at these stats. Pretty good? What? <laughs> 115 attack, 74 speed, that's not even that bad. Good offensive stab. Strong jaw, good ability. Now, Choodle kind of sucks, but surprisingly early evolution, which is also easy to obtain because of universal XP share with no penalty. And then the moment you get to Dreadnought, you can relearn Crunch, strong jaw boost. You can get Razor Shell, good stab. And then you can eventually also TM Ice Fang, which is going to get you a strong jaw boost. I'm gonna say, this is probably the biggest shock for me. Like, I expected this thing to be way worse. I don't think you can deny these stats. Good Pokemon! Now, Choodle was shocking. This is not horrible. <laughs> horrible! Uh, the only good thing you can say about the Jigglypuff line is that it's cute. This thing's not even cute! Hideous! <laughs> it's got a really good move pool, and horrible stats. It does not have the stats to do anything with the tools it has available. It's pretty good if your name is Hungrybox. It's about it. We're actually, we're gonna put this above Squavit. Not because it's actually better than Squavit, but because this way it's actually hugging Wooper, and, and Wooper needs a hug. Gardevoir and Gallade. So normally I just use the base forms of Pokemon, and I do that because I, I want to remind you at all times that you don't start with final forms, right? You start with base forms most of the time, and you have to do some work to get them to their final forms. Curlia, the middle stage of this evolution line, is one of the worst Pokemon ever. It is literally worse than unknown. With Gardevoir, you can't skip Curlia. You have to level up from Ralts, who's awful, through Curlia, who's awful, and eventually you get Gardevoir, who's great. If you instantly started with Gardevoir, it would be Area 1. Because you have to go through so much work, I think I'm going to put this in very low Area 2. Psychic Fairy is 
a fairly good stab combo, mostly the fairy part, but it does combo very well with Psychic because Dark is the Psychic immunity, but Fairy beats Dark. You actually get Ralts really, really early in the game, like even before the first town. So great availability. Because of how generous XP is, I'm not penalizing it this much for being totally useless until like level 30, but it is. Now, what's the difference between Gardevoir and Gallade? Well, Gallade has a different typing. It's got Psychic Fighting, which is arguably worse. It's also a physical attacker as opposed to a special attacker. What's the evolution method? Well, while you had to level to get up to Gardevoir, this is a stone evolution. And that means you can get it right away. Area one, baby. This thing is absurd. And he's been playing Monster Hunter because Gallade has got sharpness mechanics. He's got the whetstone. Are you ready for this? So first of all, look at these stats. 80 speed, exactly enough. 125 attack, beautiful. If that's not enough to kill them, the fact that your slashing moves are 50% stronger definitely is. What slashing moves do you get? Aqua Cutter, Fury Cutter, okay, that one's bad. Leaf Blade, Night Slash, Sacred Sword. Think Psycho Cut's a cutting move? It might not be. But you notice how these all say level one? That's because the moment you stone Evo, so the moment you get to Curlia, you can evolve and then you can use the relearn function to at any point trick out your moveset. Good Pokemon. And if that's not enough, it's also good at helping you catch things because you can fall swipe and you can hypnosis. New private dating chat. You know what? I, I would consent to a private dating chat with this Pokemon. It's really good. Banned. The ban hammer doesn't get a bonus from sharpness. <laughs> doesn't need it, it's powerful enough. You know what, I think Gallade is actually the best Pokemon we've talked about so far. <laughs> this thing is crazy. Blades. Most slashing moves also have high crit, which is just a nice bonus. I think we've got blue sharpness for this one. Break out the wet stones. And while you're at it, break out Monster Hunter because it's a better game than this one. <laughs> I'm in a bit of a dilemma here, because I forgot to mention that these two were also both in the Dipa and Legends decks. I guess I'll mention it now. People are gonna say that it's a stale joke that keeps getting repeated. How about the fact that it's a stale dex that keeps getting repeated? Isn't that the real issue? Drowsy. Shockingly bad? <laughs> I think it's actually worse than Krikatsu. <laughs> Slow, defensive psychic type. With a strangely late Evo, it's like level 28. I was wrong. It's level 26. For this. No thanks. <laughs> New repeating joke just dropped. So to explain this joke, we faced oh, a student in the game who is a grown adult, of course. He talks about how he's been at the academy for 20 years. He uses a level 20 basculin, one level for each year. And when you beat him, he says, 20 years for this. <laughs> oh, I vibe with the disappointment. RIP Gen 1 Hypno, where Psychic was indisputably the best type for in-game. I guess Normal was best competitively. And this 115 was actually 115 special. So it actually hit pretty hard. Put me to sleep so I can dream of a better Pokemon than this one. Also, notice how Hypno is a Pokemon themed around putting people to sleep and eating their dreams. You, uh... You notice something wrong here? Now, you might be thinking, oh, it's because they removed Dream Eater from the game, right? No, they didn't. Gardevoir learns it. Ghastly. I hope you enjoyed Ghastly in the Dipo remake and in Legends, because he's back in this game. And you're glad that he's back, because he's always really, really good. Can't really go wrong with Ghastly. So even the base form of Ghastly is like super good. It's got like a hundred special attack. And then as it evolves, it just gets even better. Now it is a trade Evo and we are penalizing trade Evos a bit in this game because they are pay to win. You have to actually pay for a separate online service, Nintendo Online, to be able to trade, which not everyone can do. However, it's not a prank bro in this game. Mindy in shambles. Mindy pranks you in previous games by trading you a Haunter with an Evo Stone so that it doesn't actually evolve, an Everstone, sorry. In this game, you actually get a trade Evo Gengar. Yay, thanks, cool. Spookily good Pokemon, great stats, great availability. 
Great typing, well one of them at least. It also just happens to be a poison type. New Pokemon just dropped. Ratatouille. Not its actual name, it is called Tandemouse. It's a normal type, that's unfortunate. It eventually gets a really strong move. By eventually, I mean level 50. But it gets Population Bomb, which ends up being a 200 base power stab normal move if you have a wide lens. So it's 20 each hit, hits up to 10 times, but it checks accuracy each time and has 90 accuracy. But if you equip a wide lens, which you can easily buy, then it pretty much always hits 10 times. That's a lot of power from the move itself. The stats though. It's really fast, so it moves first. 75 attack is pretty iffy. This is a Pokemon that benefits a ton from Technician, which is hidden. No! So you don't get it, unfortunately. Gets Bullet Seed. Population Bomb level 53. Ah! If it got Population Bomb as it like leveled up into Mouse Hold then I'd probably be willing to put this at maybe like middle of area three. But I think because population bomb is so late, probably have to put this at like the bottom of area three. I think it's actually worse than Scatterbug. And another thing that I think I am actually factoring into this is these moves take forever and you cannot turn off animations in this game. So if you want to use multi-hit moves, which this Pokemon wants to do, you're going to be watching those moves for a while. And again, this is not a speed run, but this is considering you actually playing through the game. And I personally, myself, and I don't think I'm alone in this, would say, I don't want to watch these animations every single time I try to use this thing. I'm just going to use something else. And that's something that doesn't factor into any other tier list because you can just turn the animations off, but you can in this game. So I think that's actually something we have to consider. Chat full of exterminators who just hate mice. Unfortunately, this family is getting evicted. If you're lucky, you'll get a family of three, but it looks like this time, we got a family of four. There's no actual difference in the stats. Pichu! I'm not gonna complain about this thing being in every dex because it's the series mascot, right? They stuff Charmander and everything and I'm okay with that. It's an electric mouse. Electric's a pretty good type. Pichu into Pikachu is a friendship evo, which is a little annoying, but you can just catch a Pikachu, and then you can instantly stone evolve it into Raichu. Believe it or not, Pikachu does evolve. With stone evos? Hey, those are pretty good! Whoa! Oh, good Pokemon-ish? You can instantly get a stat boost, and for that, I think it goes to Area 3. You can definitely do better. And when I say do better, you can just use Palmot. Please just use Palmot, it's better in almost every way. But I guess if you're somebody who actually likes Pikachu, I've never met someone who would agree with that statement. I guess you could use this one instead. You can't go wrong with Fido. That's another way to say that. Make no mistake, Fido. You little fuck. <laughs> you little pup. This thing is so cute. How good is it? Ah, uh, these stats are pretty much the definition of okay. 95 speed is fast enough to go first, 80 attack is not enough to kill most things, but maybe if you get a super effective hit with your stab fairy, good typing, your stab fairy play rough. And I guess even though you're the one who's made of food, you can try and eat them with crunch and some other fangs. Good defense. And well-baked body is, is pretty cool. It's like super flash fire. It gives you a fire immunity that also then further boosts your defense. You become pretty much invincible. Also, compare well-baked body to water compaction from Palosant, who's also in this game. With water compaction, you get the plus two defense when you get hit by a water move. Except the water move killed you because you don't get immunity. Well-baked body actually gives you an immunity. Nice. It also gets body press, so it can actually use its defense if it wants to. I'm gonna say this is overall, it, it smells pretty good. Fresh baked area three Pokemon, I'd say. So we're currently at Triple Dog Dare. Five dollar donation from Movie Zig Five. Fido is a purebred dog. I should pay you for that one. Bummels. I think that's the German name of Slackoff. Slackoff apparently exists in this game. I've never seen one. I think it's in trees. But I just caught a Vigoroth and then got an egg from it. So eventually it evolves into Slack King, which has crazy stats, right? Literally box legendary tier stats. But it also comes with Truant, 
which you can also get because you have the ability to skip school in this game, <laughs> literally Truant. Truant, infamously bad ability, right? You lose every other turn, but there is a way to negate that because this game forces you to play in switch mode. So after you defeat an enemy Pokemon, you can just go ahead and switch out. And if you switch out, well, I guess there was no negative effect of Truant. Now, if you're going full switch mode cheese, if you're that kind of monster, I would probably put this thing at high area three. I personally don't do that. So I'm probably gonna put this, I think right above Lechonk. It hits really hard every other turn. So it's about half as good as you'd think. You can think of this as a Pokemon that has half the stats, but it actually attacks each turn. Sad. Bon Sweet. I've never seen this Pokemon. <laughs> Just like Slackoth, I think it's in trees? But I've never seen it. You basically just encounter its middle evolution, Steeny, roaming in the fields, and if you want Bond Sweet, uh, you can just go ahead and breed and get an egg for that. So let's look at Steeny's stats. Uh, sorry, I pulled up uh, Bond Sweet stats by accident. Wait. Bond Sweet? Steeny. Bond Sweet? Steeny. These stats for a middle evolution? No, that's not true. That's impossible! What are these stats? Did they forget to actually increase them? What is this? It, Curlia, is that you? Thankfully, when it evolves to Starina, like, oh wow, these are pretty good, but, uh, I, excuse me? <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> so this thing is useless. You have to get it to learn Stomp? And once you do that, you can evolve into Sarina, who actually has pretty good stats. Stomp is level 28. So basically, this thing is Curlia. Except whereas Curlia has a really good type, this is a grass type. While Gardevoir actually pays you off for training it by becoming really good, Sarina is like, okay? I think we're probably gonna put it in area three is what I'm thinking. Level 20 is not that bad, but it's not like Tsarina solos the game. It's still a grass type. I guess you eventually get high jump kick. We can put this a little higher in area three. We'll put it like here. Hang out with the villain. If this thing was grass fighting, it'd be a lot better. Are there any grass fighting Pokemon in this game? Maybe ones that evolve earlier? Maybe ones that have access to a really powerful specific move? Small live garden. When you're here, you're family. Unrelated to Smoliv, but in the glitch tier list, Smoliv Garden was my favorite. <laughs> you don't actually need Smoliv to do it, but it is also olive themed. For some reason, this is a dual grass normal type. I guess that's better than just pure grass, because you'll eventually get Stab Hyper Voice. Wow. So let's look at its final evolution, Arboliva's stats. Actually pretty good? And also its ability Seed Sower is not bad at all. So when you get hit, Seed Sower is the grass version of, I think, Sand Belch or whatever that Sandaconda thing has. If you get hit, it starts grassy terrain. So that powers up your grass moves and also heals you, which you might want because you just got hit. 39 base speed. So this is like the opposite of it goes first and then what? It goes second and then it probably does a lot of damage, or at least it would if it wasn't a grass normal type, hello? Level 35 for Evo is also kind of high. And in terms of moves, you get grass and you get normal. And I guess you get earth power, that's pretty good. Now some people don't like olives, but I do. I think we're gonna put it at the very bottom of area three. If you invest in it and you're willing to get hit, you can probably kill the opponent. All of story time, so when I was in college, sometimes I would have to do like all night sessions, college moment, uh, and I, I went to a very small college without a nearby supermarket, so sometimes my mom would send me packages of Kalamata olives. So I would have like two or three kilogram tubs of olives that I would just eat throughout the night. I really like olives. Bonsley. It falls into Sudowoodo. Sudowoodo has maybe my favorite Japanese name of all time, Usotsuki, which means liar and also fake tree. It's not even fake in this game. Faker, you're not even good enough to be my fake, I say as I terrestrialize into grass. So Sudowoodo has acceptable physical stats, right? 
all right on the physical side, horrendous speed, dies to bubble. Pretty much exactly what you would expect from a pure rock type. In terms of moves, we've got uh, moves. Hammer arm, that's okay, I guess. Wood hammer, that's pretty good. Oh, that's actually kind of good because you can get this as soon as you evolve through Mimic. And I think Mimic is like level 18. This thing is like almost all right. I think we're going to put it barely above Lechonk. It's so slow. If it wasn't so slow, it would probably be like bottom of area three. You do get Rockhead Woodhammer. So that's 120 base power move with no recoil. Maybe we'll actually put it at the top of area four. And eventually you get Rockhead Head Smash. So if you hit, 80% chance you do. We know how often those hit. You'll probably destroy the opponent, assuming you didn't die first, which you might have. Also, I hope you liked using this thing in Diaper Remake and Legends because it's back in this game. Now, I showed you Sudowoodo's stats for a very specific reason. Because I'm going to show you another Pokemon's stats. And I want you to guess what Pokemon that is. It's not, it's, it, it's not, we're not going in order. So that's my hint for you. Actually, try and guess. Don't look at the tab. Yeah. This is Stonejourner. What? <laughs> Sudowoodo in shambles. What are these stats? Why does this have 70 speed? Insanely min-maxed. Absurd. Now I will say, it has no ability because this only applies to doubles and there are no doubles in this game. Designs don't factor into my ratings, but I hate this Pokemon. It literally looks like a five-year-old's drawing of Stonehenge. Come on, you really couldn't do better than this? Guess who drew this one? He actually did make some Pokemon that I do like, but this is not one of them. But I mean, yeah, this thing is kind of crazy. Insanely min-maxed stats, and you can catch this fairly early, it's just in the desert. Just go get one. Assuming you're playing Scarlet. There are Pokemon that are a lot more exciting than this, with, like, better typing, but this thing's got super good stats. At least physically. Dice to bubble though. It's got a pretty disappointing move pool. Basically just gets some basic rock moves and some basic ground moves. Eventually it gets body press though. Pretty good Pokemon. Unfortunately. Because it is creatively bankrupt. Lycanroc forms. So Lycanroc actually has three forms. It's got midnight form. Uh, it's got midday form, which I don't have here. And it has dusk form. I, I think dusk form and midday form are like the same. They're like two speed different. I, I don't really understand the point. Apparently Dusk is way better. So this is the midday form, which is not on the list. 112 speed, 115 attack, pretty good. For abilities you get Keen Eye, useless Sand Rush, not useful in game. What if you go for the Dusk form? If it's Dusk, you get 117 attack, which is a bit higher. 110 speed, which is still high enough to outspeed absolutely everything. Except for midday form, which you're not going to face, so it does not matter. They have essentially the same speed. This is the big difference. Tough Claws. So you do 30% more damage with your contact moves. Wow. Why would you ever do midday? <laughs> the issue with Dusk form is that it's a bit more difficult to obtain because you have to evolve it during a very certain time of day. Now, the way that you set the time of day in this game. It's a little bit clunky, but all you have to do is go to your dorm room and then you can go to your bed and sleep until whatever time you want it to be. I wish that you could do that on the overworld, but if you go through the inconvenience, you can set the time. Just kidding, of course. There's no way to set the time in this game. Great open world game. You just gotta wait. And the lies continue because although this is not actually a hidden ability, it kind of is. So only an own tempo rock gruff can evolve into dusk form during a very certain time of day. But if you don't want to do that, you can also find this one in the wild, and you can also find it in high-level raids. What moves does this thing get? Rock moves. Didn't see that coming. Crunch. Fangs. Brick break, that's pretty good. Close combat, that's pretty good. Apparently there's a fixed own tempo rock rough that can evolve into the dusk form, Terra normal, unfortunately, but that makes it a lot easier to obtain. Whether you get the dusk form or the worse midday form, probably just gonna put it uh, area two. 
we're probably going to put it above Stonejourner because it's really fast and it also hits decently hard, especially if you manage to get the Dusk form for the Tough Claws boost. Now, the Tough Claws boost doesn't actually affect that many things. It barely affects your stab moves. I think the only one it does is Accelerock, which goes from 40 base power to 30% more than that. And it's a priority move, but you're really fast. You're probably going first anyway. Your other contact moves will get the boost, though, so that's mostly just fang moves. Those make contact, right? <laughs> now, what if night falls? Don't try and evolve your rock rough. Midnight form is just way worse. <laughs> like, it changes from being a super fast and strong attacker to, like, a middling speed, bad, bulky attacker. Like, what? It just changes the distribution to be way, way worse. That doesn't mean it's bad overall, but why would you ever use this over either the midday or the dusk form? You wouldn't. Now, I think because one of its level up moves, or I think it's actually its Evo move is counter. You're supposed to like try and get hit and then counter attack. What? No, don't counter attack. Hit them first and kill them. Hello? Also, why isn't this a dark type? Hello? It's not bad but it's just completely outclassed by the Dusk form and the Midday form. I think we're gonna put it like here. Also, we are currently at Quadruple Dog Dare. Roly Coley, Fire Rock, the classic Slugma male typing. Really bad defensively. But that's okay because this is an offensive Pokemon. Oh, 80 in both offenses? Never mind. Well, you certainly will be offended. It's not very good. But Rock Fire is a decent stab combination. You do have a lot of defense, so you might not die. I think we'll put this like above Smoliv? Level 34 evolution. Wish it was a little earlier. Also, what is this Evo line? Lump of Coal? Coal Cart? Trey? Oh no, it's a... Furnace? Demon, I guess? What? What happened? So it has an ability here, Steam Engine which raises your speed by three stages if you get hit by a fire or a water move. Fire move, you'll probably be fine because it'll do quarter damage to you, but water moves will do quadruple damage to you, so you gotta be careful. Well, apparently on Bulbapedia, Steam Engine actually increases your speed by plus six, which I guess makes it a little better. Also, you might notice I keep getting stock image ads for sandwiches. Can you figure out why that keeps happening to me? I think that in the end, you can go mine some coal from Galar Mine, Area 3. Shinx! Hope you like this guy in the Diaper Remake and the Legends Pokedex, because it's back now. Shinx is pretty good. Now, unfortunately, it is a physical electric type. I hope you like Wild Charge, but its special attack is actually not that bad. I think its special attack is the same as Pikachu. Luxray's 95 special attack is actually better than Raichu's. Wow! It gets Intimidate. That's a good ability. It gets some decently strong physical moves that aren't electric. And of course, it's got really good attack and good enough speed. So I'm probably going to put this like high area three. My favorite electric dark type, Starly. I hope you enjoyed Starly in the Dipa remake and in Legends because it's back in this game. It's really good, just like always. Uh, it's the best regional bird ever, right? Is that fair to say? It's definitely the best in game. Bottom of area one? 100 base speed is enough to go first, and 120 attack is enough to kill everything. And it has Intimidate, and it has Stab Brave Bird, and it gets close combat. Good Pokemon. Oricorio. Very interesting Pokemon. It has four different forms, which you can swap between by feeding it a certain nectar. The form doesn't actually change its stats, but it does change its typing. So this one's Fire Flying, you can change it to Electric Flying, you can change it to... I think this is Psychic Flying, and you can change it to Ghost Flying. So your typing affects, obviously, your stab, which you can access using... Da, 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 Revelation Dance, which will always match your primary type, whatever that is. So another game that features revelations and dancing? I hope not, it would probably be really bad. All the forms have the exact same stats, and these stats are... okay. 93 base speed, probably good enough. 98 special attack, probably not good enough, but it could be worse. Dance Dance Revelation, but only at level 40, so before then, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to use your stab type. 
that's a pretty big downside. So this Pokemon is flexible and you can adapt its type to whatever your team needs, but it's not that exciting overall. I think we'll put it around here. Notably, because it is a single stage Pokemon, from the moment you get it, it has those stats. You don't actually have to invest in it at all to power it up. Apparently, your Terra type also applies to your Revelation Dance. So it's as if you have a 10 base power higher Terra Blast. Mareep. People love Mareep. And Mareep is really good in Generation 2. Outside of Generation 2, I think that Mareep is definitely overrated and underhated. That's not to say that it's bad. But what I will say to you is wake up, Mareeple. This thing is so slow. It's so slow. But it does have really good special attack. Very similar to Smoliv. Eh, it's maybe a little bit better than Smoliv, because Electric's just a better type. But you are 100% going second. And if you can hit the opponent with Thunderbolt, you probably killed them. But that's about it. Please bring back the Elemental Punching Circuit. It was specifically very good in Generation 2, because in Generation 2 you could teach it the Elemental Punches, and also because Generation 2 had stat XP instead of EVs, you ended up just having really buffed up stats, which included your speed, so even though you were slow, you probably still went first. Doesn't apply to this game. You're going second. I hope you can survive. Alright, we will say that I'd rather use Mareep for power than get my power from Cole. Better than Roly Coley. Petlil into Lilligant. Grass types are bad, but this one's pretty okay. Huge point in Petlil's favor, it's a stone evolution. That means you have to deal with Petlil, you can go right to Lilligant. Lilligant's a pure grass type, that's pretty bad. Quiver Dance, that's pretty good. I think we're gonna put it with the other stone evo, because what do you actually do with Lilligant after you boost your stats? I guess you can hit them with grass moves. Now these stats are actually pretty good. Now a lot of stuff for Lilligant looks really good. These stats are actually pretty good. Own Tempo can negate the confusion from Petal Dance. Perhaps most excitingly, the moment you evolve using your Sunstone, which you can do right away, you can get Quiver Dance. And you also get Petal Dance. What other moves do you get? What, what other moves do you get? What other moves do you get? What other moves do you get? Oops, all grass. I think what they should have done is given it like a secondary fighting type with an additional fighting stab. That would have been area one. Oh well. Maybe they'll add that someday. Really good stats. Insane boosting move. Too bad it's a grass type. Oh, 69mega.com. Don't worry guys, megas are back. They have an AI that can help us find the perfect match. It Band. You like shrooms? I'm a mushroom fan. Shroomish. It's a grass type, but it can evolve and gain another type. And it evolves early, level 20. This thing's good. How much attack does Breloom have? It's got little noodle arms. Little noodle arms that are doing 130 base attack of damage to you. Wow. And it also has an alternate route you can do. If you need a support Pokemon, you can just park this thing in the back until it's level 40, and then you can use it with Spore. What if you can't kill the opponent in one hit? Well, I guess you can kill them in two hits because they're taking a nap before you send them to the endless dirt nap. Good Pokemon. <laughs> Unfortunately, Technician is its hidden ability, so you probably can't do Technician Bullet Seed in this game, which would have been really good. You'll just have to settle for Poison Heal, one of the other best abilities in the history of Pokemon. Too bad. Now one thing that you would be able to do that would be really good is you can buy the Toxic Orb, poison yourself, and then switch to another item, so you're both invincible and do a lot of damage. Unfortunately, if you're friends with Shroomish, which you probably will be because you should use this, it can cure the poison from itself. That's unfortunate. And apparently if you get really lucky, you can do a shroomish raid to get one that has spored around level 15. And then the whole world is your cloister. Cloister is also in this game. If this was fighting not grass, it would probably be in area one. So Applin is apparently in this game. I've never seen it. I got mine from a raid that I happened to luck into. I think it's on trees. 
So Applin, Grass Dragon. Okay typing, at least the dragon part of it, but you could evolve them instantly because they're basically stone evos? I guess they're, they're seed evos, you hit them with apple. You can go into one of two forms, Flapple or Appleton. Flapple is definitely better because it's faster. It's pretty unexciting. I think Flapple gets to be at the very bottom of Area 3. I'd rather use all of these Pokemon over Flapple. And Apple Ton, this thing's like Area 4 material. Really slow. We might actually move this down further. This thing can feed a family of four, okay? How about that? Flapple does have kind of a useful signature move. Grab Apple. Or you bonk him on the head with an apple. Oop. 80 base power grass move, but then it lowers their defense. That's alright. Area 3 levels of all right, I'd say. Appleton has the special version of Grav Apple, but you can't really use it because you died because you're really slow. And Appleton a day keeps everyone away. Don't use Appleton. One bad apple spoils the bunch. Lots of apple phrases. Spoink. Adorable. Where's Hypno? What? Slow, bulky psychic type with a fairly high level evo. So cute. So springy. So bad. Not even the best chonker pig in this game. Why is Hypno on here twice? These stats actually, they're not that bad. Level 32 evo. Ew. 32 levels. For this. I think we've got spring loaded action, right? We can be pork pals, okay? How about that? Look at this, Pork Pals right above Drowsy. You guys remember Chatot? What was wrong with Chatot? Here's Chatot, again. Squawkabilly, normal flying. It's pretty good if your name is Star Raptor, not if your name is Squawkabilly. It's a single stage, and the stats you get look like this. Which I'm going to be honest, is not that bad. It's probably even better than you were expecting, especially because it comes with Intimidate. Or you can be on the Slugma Mail grind set and you can use Hustle. It could be a lot worse. It's probably better than Chatot. And because it's a single stage, you can use that stuff right away. So I think we're gonna put it probably middle of area three. Well, thank you very much. As for the move pool, it's exactly what you would expect. It's a normal flying type and it gets normal and flying moves. You could do Stab, Hustle, Aerial Ace. The combo. 60 base power. Well, it is a combo. Not a good one, though. Well, we, we might summon one of the adult bots by saying this, but we should mention that this thing can't help falling in love with you. Don't copyright claim me. They won't, because that wasn't a very good rendition. Misdrivus. Stone Evolution. Hey, let's go. Get stoned! Get good stats! Immediately! It's a ghost type. Unfortunately, it's pure ghost. Would have really liked a secondary typing. I wonder if they'll make a variant of this that has one. But if you're playing Violet, because this is Violet exclusive, you can catch a mischievous, go grab a Dusk Stone, and get some good stats right away. I'll take it. Why aren't you using Gengar, though? Also, shoutouts to Mizdravis, because Mismagius is the only interesting Terra type usage in the entire game. Iono has a Mismagius and she'll Terra type it into Electric, and because Mismagius has Levitate, it has no weaknesses, which means it's invincible, because the only way to deal damage in this game is to do super effective damage, right? Don't fall for the super effective swindle. Also, great theming on Iono, she's got Magnemite in her hair doesn't use a Magnemite, not even in the rematch. Says that you're caught in her Electroweb, doesn't use Electroweb on a single Pokemon. And it's not a translation issue because she also says Electroweb in Japanese. Great game, guys. Makuhita, available early. Big attack stat. Slow. But I mean, I, I can't really say that it's bad or anything. Gearish? <laughs> if only this thing had Iron Fist, or not, not quite a fist, Iron Hands, that would make it a lot better. Speaking of meaty hands, how about big meaty claws? Crab Rawler. Stone Evo, that's good, right? Ice type Evo, that's bad, right? Uh-oh. So it's got really good attack. It hits insanely hard, but it's slow. That can be okay if you can survive. 
But what if you take double damage from everything? What then? I think because this is a stone Evo, so you can get the stat boost right away, and because it does hit really hard, and because Ice Fighting Stab is really good, if you're very, very careful and you don't instantly die, you can do some okay damage. Top of area four? Crabominable. Abominable is right. Oh. Solandit. Similar to Combi, Solandit has a female exclusive evolution where it will become Solazzle, a fire poison type. Unlike Combi, Solazzle is actually good. <laughs> really good speed, really good special attack, and fire is a good type. And poison is a type. About here? It goes first. It does some pretty good damage with fire moves. And with corrosion, you can poison steel types. Incredible. Why don't you just kill them with your fire move though? What? Great ability. Apparently there's a level 30 to 40 static Salazzle that you can get in the cave leading to the psychic type gym. That lets you skip the hassle of hunting for a female Salandit, but it is, uh, I think, like level 35. So you need enough badges to actually control it. So I don't think you can get points for like early availability that way. I think this is an okay placement for it. Not exactly dazzled by Salazzle. Fampy. Really cute. Fairly early evolution into Donphan, and Donphan stats are actually pretty good. It's slow, but really good physical stats. It hits hard. Stab Earthquake. It's alright. Uh, I don't think it's an area 4 Pokemon. I think it, it's probably around this area. Uh, well, actually, we're actually going to put it next to Mareep. It's in the same camp where it's slow, so it probably goes second, but it does actually hit you back really hard. I think this thing would be stronger if it had better tusks. Maybe you could give it power treads. That's a very good item if this was Dota 2, but it's not. It's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, unfortunately. I have no idea how to say this Pokemon's name. Siufant? Kufant? So Qfant evolves into Copperaja. 122 HP, 130 attack, 69 defense, nice. 80 special attack, okay. 69 special defense, nice. 30 speed, uh-oh, uh oh. I think we can just put it with Fan? P? Big stats! Slow. And pure steel is not nearly as good on offense as pure ground. But hey, you probably won't die. That's nice. Now, although I do think that Donphan is better than Copperaja, we're just gonna switch their order here so that they're doing like a high five with their trunks. Storytelling through visual design, okay? Hey trainers, Imported Sleaze here, bringing you a 1% encounter with the opportunity of a lifetime. A brand new cryptid currency just dropped, and I'm letting you in on the early access mint. You'd have to be a real dunce to pass up on the opportunity to invest in Tsuchino Coin. Become a channel member today and receive your first two segments of Tsuchino Coin, which you can invest whenever this prompt appears on screen. If you're a filthy poor person, you can also join the Discord, link in the description, and start building your Tsuchinokoin portfolio for free. This golden opportunity has run away, so don't delay. Invest in Tsuchinokoin today for real returns, guaranteed. Return not available in Gen 8 or 9. Gibble. Garchomp's pretty good, right? It's probably like the single best Pokemon you can use because it will always go first and annihilate your opponent. Unfortunately, you don't start with Garchomp, you start with Gibble. Gibble's actually not that bad. For some reason, Garchomp, even though it's the strongest out of all the pseudo-legendaries, also evolves the earliest. Very fair and balanced. <laughs> Area 1? So Gibble, really bad. Gabite? Actually not that bad, actually usable. And Garchomp, probably one of the best Pokemon in the entire game. So he's gonna be a bench worm in hero for a little bit, but not that long, not as long as the other pseudos. And your reward is also the best. I mean, look at these stats. They're pretty good. No natural earthquake, unfortunately. You can just give it earthquake through TM. It's definitely worth it. Level 24 to Gabite, level 48 to Garchomp. It evolves earlier and is better. What? Here's a reminder that Garchomp is so good, it's literally better than its Mega. Good Pokemon. Also, I hope you liked using this in Daipa and Legends, because he's back here. 
The Knockly Line, Pokemon X Minecraft collab. Let's look at the stats for Garganackle. So pure rock type. Purifying Salt is a very interesting ability. It makes you immune to status, and it also reduces ghost type damage against you by half. So you basically get a free ghost resist. All right physical stats. Actually, all right special defense. So very sturdy overall. 35 base speed. So you're probably going second. You probably will survive, and your opponent might survive. Level Evo, 24 into Knackle Stack. 38 into Garganackle, so kind of late. What kind of moves do you get? Rock moves, ground moves. Hey, Natural Earthquake. Garchomp, Seething. Elemental Punches, hey, that's pretty good. Overall, I wouldn't exactly call this thing the boulder, right? I would much rather have more attack and the secondary ground stab. So all that being said, I think we're going to put this thing um, at the very top of area one. This thing is probably the most important Pokemon in the entire game. And not because it actually fights. So one of the storylines is the Titan one. Every Titan fight is five copy-pasted cutscenes with a small boss battle in between. And these battles gate the Herba Mystica HM moves that allow you to traverse the world. I want you guys to remember that salt is a key ingredient in cheese. Knockly on its own can solo all of these fights because of a little move called Salt Cure. And this move doesn't look very good. 40 base power deals damage each turn. Steel and water types are more affected. What does this mean? So Salt Cure is the only persistent damage over time effect that you can actually use to affect the Titans. So you can't actually poison them. And moves like Wrap that deal incremental percentage based damage, those have durations. Salt Cure doesn't. Once you start salting them, the attack continues until they're cured. And Nockley's other ability, aside from Purifying Salt, is sturdy. So what that means is that the moment you hit level 24 and evolve into Knackle Stack to learn Salt Cure, you can go and you can kill all the Titans. All you have to do is Salt Cure them and then just use Big Pharma. As long as you heal up to full HP every turn, Sturdy keeps you from dying. So you can just sit there until they're fully cured and you can break the entire game wide open. Your gameplay experience is still going to be awful because this game is atrocious, but it's going to be much better than it would be otherwise because you can go and get all the traversal abilities right away. And it's all thanks to one salty boy. Very unique reason why this thing gets to be Area 1. Because for your in-game playthrough, you should do this 100%. If I were to rank this purely based on combat, I probably would put it next to like small if sky hates titans new attack on titan reboot i think knockley also justifies its super high placement because a lot of these pokemon they do the same thing right they kill the opponent and they kill them really effectively nothing else can do what knockley does it's the only one that can do it you have to use knockley if you want to do this cheese wingle water flying type Defensive, but it gets drizzle big buff. So it'll actually do like normal damage But then it also gets stab hurricane that never misses because it's raining except it might not be raining because overworld weather Cannot be overwritten. So a fair amount of the time when you send out Pelipper Drizzle doesn't even activate great game Pico why must you continue to disappoint me? So after I saved you all those years ago if overworld weather was not a thing, it probably would escape the sea. But given that a fair amount of the time its ability just doesn't work, I think it calls the sea its home. Rain is way more common than other weather. Well, that's fine, but in, then in that case, it's if you don't even have Drizzle. Magikarp! Now, the whole point of Magikarp is that Magikarp is terrible. But if you make the sacrifices to feed this useless Pokemon XP up to level 20, which used to involve real cost, you had to take XP from your other Pokemon and give it to Magikarp, you were rewarded with a Gyarados who's really strong. Uh, that downside hasn't been relevant for almost a decade, thanks to Universal XP Share. Why would you not use this? 
It's really good. Level 20 is nothing. You can get Magikarp right at the beginning of the game, super easy to catch, and pretty soon you're just gonna have a Gyarados for free. Insane attack. Intimidate. Great typing. The reason why you wouldn't use this is because you're sick of this. Why would you be sick of this? It was in the Dipa and Legends Pokedex. It's here too. It's also in like every Pokedex. We'll get a real flying type stab move someday, don't worry. Arrokuda and Barrascuda. Oh, is this like a fish? I mean, it's gotta be C tier, right? Like, what kind of stats could this possibly have? Okay. Fish. <laughs> Let's min maxing. What? It gets swift swim. It doesn't really need it. It's swimming swiftly anyway. Level 26 evolution. That's not even that late. You can get Arakuda really early. Chop him in the throat. Crunch them. Liquidation. Ice Fang. Brick Break. Psychic Fangs. Drill Run. Close combat? Hello? If this thing had like a secondary stab, this would probably be Area 1. Actually, it's Area 1, right? Like, the most boring Area 1 Pokemon ever, but yeah. Pretty equivalent to Gyarados, honestly. I think you're right. Arrokuda. Hits a bullseye. Basculin. It's a fish. Adaptability is pretty good. So normally your stab multiplier is 1.5. If you have adaptability, like Basculin does, it goes to 2. And if you Terra on top of that, you get 2.25. Okay. C tier. Also, for some reason, Basculin is like the hardest Pokemon to catch in the entire game. At least in my experience, but also scattered reports from other denizens of the web that they also couldn't catch this thing. I don't know why they made this thing so ornery. It's not like you get a reward for catching it, you get a Basculin. It'd be pretty good if it had an evolution that gave it a really good secondary type. Maybe next gen. Gulpin. Gulpin D's nuts. <laughs> Horrendous. Can somebody think of a use for this thing? Game Freak, for everything we criticized them for, they were at least merciful enough to quarantine this to only one version. So only one version has to suffer through gulpin. Slugma balls. Below Hopip? Sure. Awful. Mono poison defensive. No thanks. How bad is Swallet? Look at this. 26 levels for this. Ah, oh, poison normal. <laughs> Elemental punches at least. Oh. One man's trash is another man's treasure. I hope you don't find this on your treasure hunt. Oh. Meow, that's wrong. Oh, horrible. Oh. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Pathetic offensive stats. 115 speed, 70 attack. Technician's good. 28 levels for this. Normal dark. As a consolation prize for Meowth. It doesn't affect its placement here, but if you do the side quest, huge air quotes on that, for the language teacher, then he will give you a Galarian Meowth. And Galarian Meowth has a very important role in endgame raids, because they all buff each other, and then you can do some really strong steel attacks. That's not gonna happen in your in-game playthrough. And to actually get that Galarian Meowth, you have to go to like the seventh gym badge to actually unlock that portion of the social link with the language teacher. So all of that for a level five Meowth. No. Another barrier to getting Galarian Meowth is you have to actually go to the classes. I would rather go to school in real life. The classes are horrible. Hide your kids. It's Drifloon. It's generally defensive, but it's, it's not that bad on offense. Ghost is a really good type, and a nice benefit of Ghost in this game applies to all of them, is that Ghost types can always escape. So if you happen to run into uh, a strong Pokemon that you want to run away from, if you have a Ghost type, you can just leave. Just run away. That's a nice benefit. Eh? 
High area four, maybe? Now these are what the stats look like. Sky high HP, literally sky high. Flying type, right? 80 attack, uh, 90 special attack, probably not good enough. 80 speed, just barely good enough. You have to wait to level 28 to actually get Driftblim. In terms of move pool, you get Shadow Ball. Hey, that's okay. Can I have a special flying move, please? Hello? I don't mean Gust. I guess you could do Acrobatics because your physical attack and special attack are basically the same. Hey, Thunderbolt is cool. We're also going to give this a special mention for Unburden Acrobatics because one of the very few actually positive quality of life changes they made in this game was that certain consumable items are no longer actually consumed. So for example, in previous games, Focus Sash was a one-time use item, unless you're in a competitive battle. But in this game, if you get knocked down to your Focus Sash and it saves you, it refreshes after the battle. So you actually can use powerful consumables and combo them with Unburdened to then definitely move first and hit them with an Acrobatics. Almost a good combo. I wish it wasn't on Driftblim. I think we're actually going to go ahead and put it above Crabominable. Also, I hope you liked using this thing in Daipa and Legends because it's here too. Flabebe. Public enemy number one in this game because it's practically invisible in the field. You are going to encounter Flabebe way more than you ever want to. It's especially bad in Area Zero because you have to like strain your eyes to see the microscopic lightning fast text while there's also lighting effects and Flabebe flitting around everywhere. I hate this thing so much. How is it in terms of in-game performance? Well, Florgis is a stone evolution. That's good. Pretty decent stats. I mean, 75 base speed is almost good enough. You're invincible against special attacks. 112 special attack, that's actually pretty good. Fairy typing's really good. Flower Veil, so it doesn't have an ability. And only level 19 to Floet, so actually, that's not that bad. What moves do we get? Grass and Fairy. Okay, I think considering that you only have to get to level 19 to get to Floet, then you can immediately Shiny Stone to Florges, and you can then get Stab Moonblast off of that right away through move relearning. We're gonna go ahead and promote this to Area 2. We'll put it next to Gardevoir. I think that's about right. Why isn't this a grass type, by the way? I can't believe I'm asking for something to gain a grass type. Diglet. First things first. Diglet, dig, diglet, dig. Trio, trio, trio. Okay, we didn't forget. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? I think this is the Pokemon you're going to be most disappointed by. This thing always goes first and just barely does not do enough damage. <laughs> Ah, it's so frustrating. If this thing had just like a bit more attack, it would be so much better. As is, I think we're gonna put it like here-ish in area three. Like a hundred attack is not that bad. It's actually like pretty good. Normally, I don't consider durability for Pokemon because you, you should just be going first and hitting them. So you take zero damage, but sometimes you're not gonna kill them. And if you get hit, you are super dead. This thing is made of paper. So I think for Diglett, because it cannot one-shot the enemy, its defense actually does matter. It doesn't have 100 attack, it has like 80. It got buffed, right? If you're wrong, you're banned. Any last words? Goodbye. Banda! You're not actually banned. Because uh, you were right in the past, but it got, it got buffed. I guess we may as well do Wiglet, because it is basically the same as Diglett, except it's a water type. Wiglet wig, wiglet wig, trio, trio, trio. <laughs> the ending's the same, right? Actually, we're just gonna put this in the C, as it should be. They're basically the same, but ground is better on offense, and offense is all that matters. With Wug Trio, you're probably less likely to kill the opponent, and water is a very good defensive type, not good enough to actually save Wiglet. Also, whose idea was it to give this thing gooey? An ability that synergizes with getting hit when getting hit kills you. It gets a unique move, triple dive. So it's 30 base power three times. So 90 overall, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, the animation takes forever. So I don't want to use it. And your opponent is probably still alive. Special shout outs to Wiglet though, for being an area one Pokemon in the visual glitch tier list. 
You don't even have to be that creative to use it. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Torkoal. So Torkoal got a big buff. They gave it one of the most powerful abilities in the game, Drought, which allows it to automatically set sun. Maybe, if there's no overworld weather. Does it have the stats to use that power? Nope. 20 speed. This is what you'd expect from a turtle. I don't know why Dreadnought's so fast. Fire moves. Shell smash. Double your 20 speed. That'll get him. Body press, that's something. Earth power. Eh? Earthquake, Stone Edge. Eh? I'd say saved from memedom by its absurd ability. Probably gonna be an Area 3 Pokemon. I will say shoutouts to Torkoal for being an alternate way to set up your past Paradox Pokemon. Because it doesn't actually have to be Oracalcum Pulse that sets up the sun. As long as it is sunny, all of your past Paradox Pokemon will be able to activate their photosynthesis. And there's no equivalent for Miraidon. Nothing has Electric Surge in this game. Now uh, apparently Pink Urchin has Electric Surge, but it's a hidden ability. And I might have forgotten Pink Urchin exists. Can you really blame me? I will say I'd probably rather use Torkoal than Pink Urchin. Uh-oh. Nummel. Area 1 in my heart. This thing is so cute. When it evolves, no longer that cute. Fire Ground, really great stab combo. Big damage. It has mixed attacking stats, 100 attack, 105 special attack, I think. Super slow. It's about the opposite of a glacier, but it is glacial in speed. Super, super slow. And it can't even take a hit. That's okay damage though. This might actually be top of area four. It's really, really slow. If you're gonna be slow, you should at least hit really hard and this thing doesn't. Yeah, I think that's a good comment. Slow, bulky, mixed attacker. Truly a Hoenn moment. Bronzor. Hope you liked using this thing in Daipa and Legends because it's back in this game. This is probably the first Pokemon I'm going to put in a low tier despite the fact that I think it's good, in contexts that aren't this game's tier list. I don't know if I want to put it in Paldea's Finest. It doesn't die. How much is that worth? Nothing. Bronzor is completely useless. It has like 20-20 offenses. 20-20, good for your eyesight. Not good for a year, that's the year the world like went to hell. Also not good if those are your offensive stats. Bronzong gets a very big bump in offenses. 89 attack is bad, but like okay-ish. Good defense is 33 speed, oof. 33 levels for this. One level for each point of speed. <laughs> we'll say saved from Paldea's finest, because if you actually get to Bronzong, I guess its attack stat is okay. And the whole time, it's really good defensively. But that doesn't matter. Haxorus! Haxorus does one thing. A lot of damage. Which is what you care about. It's almost really good. Very bottom of area 2? So this thing, if it hits you, you're probably dead. Its speed is good enough. Unfortunately, it's a really late evolution. Like, you have to invest in this thing. What really, I think, keeps this out of area 1 and what makes it really low in area 2 is even its second evolution into Fracture is level 38. It's so late. If it was like level 25 for Fracture, I'd probably put this like top of area two. But this thing is pretty much useless until at least Fracture. Fracture is still not that good. And then same level as Garchomp, I think, like level 48 or so, it becomes Haxorus, at which point it kills everything. The Garchomp at home doesn't get a great secondary type, doesn't reach its second form, as quickly, but it's still strong enough to de wreak some havoc. Imagine how good this would be if it wasn't an Unovamon. It might actually evolve at a reasonable level. You could go ahead and think of Haxorus as an investment opportunity. One that I would hesitantly recommend to you. Breaking news. Local monkey so angry that it dies. Breaking her news. Local monkey too angry to stay dead because it decided to evolve into like the best Pokemon in the game? Like what? This thing is absolutely insane. So these are the stats of Primeape. On its own, Primeape is pretty much the definition of okay. You can use Primeape, it's all right. Then it died. 
Wow. So, of course, because it's an additional evolution, it loses speed because for some reason, every new evolution has to lose speed, but it only loses five. It's still fast enough. This is the best bulky attacker ever because it's an attacker that also just doesn't die. And it scales with not dying to make you die faster. This Pokemon is ridiculous. And it starts here because Fighting Ghost is the single best stab combo in the entire game. So how do you win battles? It's not by hitting super effectively. It's by always hitting with neutral stab over and over until you win. And you can always, always, always have an effective neutral stab to use. You, you cannot well action me on that. It's impossible because the only Pokemon that resists this combo is Hisuian and Zoroark, who is not in the game. Asterisk. Now, the evolution is a little bit annoying. You get Mankey right at the start of the game, pretty much immediately. Level 28 to evolve into Primeape. Primeape is fine. Level 35, you get Rage Fist. You have to use Rage Fist 20 times to get up to Annihilate. But don't worry, you're going to be using Rage Fist way more than 20 times, believe me. What does Rage Fist actually do? Starts at 50 base power. If you get hit, it goes to 100. If you get hit again, it goes to 150. Then 200. Then 250. Then 300. Then 350. But it's never going above 150, because at that point, every single opponent is really dead. Oh, but you took damage? You're in danger of dying? No, you're not. You have Drain Punch. What are your other two moves? I don't know. Do whatever you want. You don't need any other moves. You don't need any other Pokemon. <laughs> Just use Annihilate. You thought we were playing Pokemon, but we were actually playing Ape Escape. We're going to Area M. What does M stand for? Monkey. I also just want to emphasize that in pretty much the only difficult fights of the game, Annihilate is perfect because they're against trainers that have a gauntlet of strong Pokemon, and fighting strong Pokemon makes Monkey stronger. He will not lose. Welcome to Area Monkey. Apparently, that bit earlier about local Monkey being too angry to stay dead, it's actually true, because if you die in a battle, but then you revive with either Revive or Revival Blessing, you keep your Rage Fist boosts. Don't kill this monkey. It'll actually get worse for you. Don't resist, okay? You can't resist. He has perfect neutral coverage. We're not monkeying around, okay? We're beating this game so we can go play a different one. Meditite. Fighting Psychic with pure power, so it gets doubled attack. Unfortunately, suffers from some of the same issues as Azuril, where that doubled attack requires you to specifically EV train it or IV breed it to get all of that attack doubled. That being said, it still hits really hard. It's definitely worse than Azumarill, because its evolution level is like surprisingly late. 37 levels for this. But it does actually have slightly more attack than Azuril to actually get doubled, and far more importantly, it's got 30 more base speed, which matters a lot. This, this 80, that's the magic number, right? And it gets high jump kick, which is, look at, look at 130 base power. Even though it needs a higher level to evolve, we're gonna go ahead and put this, yeah, we're, we're actually we're just gonna put it with Azuril, how about that? Doubled attack buddies. And you can Elemental Punching. It's a very fitting ace Pokemon for that gym teacher lady. So, I mean, she shows up in that psychic type Simon Says game with her Metacham. So of course, in the ace tournament when you face her, Metachams are ace, right? Right? Better than Azuril? Okay. Blue Buddies. Although I guess when it evolves, it's no longer blue. Actually, Blue Buddies stay winning because the shiny for Medicham is blue. Also, Shinx is blue. Riolu. You can get this thing pretty early. It's a friendship Evo. All you need are sandwiches. Lucario's pretty good. Fighting Steel, I hear that's a good typing. And you can get Lucario's great stats, nice and early, as long as you're friends. And sandwiches are friendship, especially in the Paldea region. Just do some walking, do some picnicking, and you can pretty much immediately get Lucario. I'd probably put this even higher in Area 2, were it not for just how annoying the extra work you have to do is. It does have to be day, though. Also, I quintuple dog dare you. 
This thing's a dog, right? Some might argue this is not actually a dog, it's a jackal. Well, if it isn't Saucy Jack. Well, if it isn't Saucy Jackal. Also, I hope you liked using this thing in Dipa and Legends, because it's in this game too. But I guess I'm not that surprised, this thing's a fan favorite. Armor Rouge and Cerule Edge. A Pokemon X Mega Man Battle Network. So the first thing you have to do is find a Charcadet. You're gonna need the power of sandwiches here too, because you can get fire encounter power, makes it much easier to find. Once you find it, based on your version, you have to get different fragments for it. I think for Armor Rouge, you have to get Bronzor fragments, pretty easy. For Cerulean, you have to collect the machine parts from the Cerulean City Gym. Now, you actually have to collect Sinistee fragments. Now, they're actually like level 40 outside of the Psychic type city, but they're easier to kill than their level would suggest if you do it, if you do it in Let's Go mode. Now, once you have enough fragments for your respective evolution, you have to go to a certain city, I think it's called Zapatico or something. There's literally nothing in that city except for a random NPC who wants to fashion armor for your Charcadet. Living, breathing, open world. So let's say you collected all these fragments, you made it to Zapapico, Zapatico, I don't know, and you got the armor. Was it worth it? Yeah. So they both have insane stats. Look at this. 75 speed, good enough. 125 special attack, more than good enough. Fire psychic, good typing, especially the fire part. And you get a signature move, armor cannon, which is a fire type close combat. You're not gonna get that until level 62, but that's fine. The moment you evolve, you can relearn mystical fire, which is gonna be more than good enough for the point in the game where you first get this. Good Pokemon. Not as good as Cerulege, who's even better. Fire Ghost. Now, not only is the fire type good, the ghost type, secondary type, is also good. Speed 85. That's better than good enough. And it's a physical attacker, which is overall, I would say, better than being a special attacker. Now, what kind of moves do you get? Well, upon evolution, you get Shadow Claw. So that's good enough. But eventually, you get this thing Bitter Blade. 90 base power fire move and it heals you. So even though you're a ghost, you'll never die. Nice. So which one of these is better? I think Cerulege is better once it's fully trained, like once you have all of its moves, but Armor Rouge is a little bit easier to get because you don't have to fight Sinisties, you can just fight super weak Bronzors. But these are like interchangeable. I think you could flip these every which way, but I think Ar Armor Rouge being easier to get ma makes it a little bit better. Don't say that Armor Knights are bad. They're not. Not in this game, at least. And just to be clear, like, why I think they're all the way up here is because the moment you get Charcadet, which is really early, you can go ahead and get the Evo item and evolve them right away. So you get this level of power, like, before the first gym. Barboach. Water Ground, one of the best type combos in the game. Would be one of the worst Pokemon in the game otherwise. How far can great typing carry you? Follow the currents to the sea. At least Barboach gets special treatment because you can put it on a cushion in the sandwich shop. That's its natural environment, right? The sandwich shop is the natural environment of everyone in Paltea. I hope you liked using this thing in Dipa and Legends Arceus because it's in this game too. I think there are three water ground types in this game and all three have atrocious stats. Swampert, where are you? Please. Tad bulb, really small. How do you evolve this thing? With a Thunderstone. Oh, a Stone Evo, that's good. So you can go ahead and Thunderstone up to Belly Bolt and get these stats right away. Uh-oh, they could be worse. It is actually bulky, so it'll survive a hit. And surviving hits actually rewards you by giving you charge. So it then makes your next electric move 50% stronger. That's not bad. But this, this is really bad. Even if you do one-shot everything, you're gonna be one-shotting them after they hit you. So I think somebody else said it. It's Ampharos, but earlier? Yeah, I think that's a good place for it. And it's Ayano's ace, right? I mean, she was in a trailer with it, and she had wonderful voice acting in the trailer. There's no way that in the game she would be completely silent and also just randomly toss out Belly Bolt as if it was just some uh, random rube. Don't believe everything you see in a trailer, kids. 
Gumi. Gumi, please. Adorable. Worst pseudo legendary of all time. So you got Gibble. You level it up, what do you get? You get Garchomp. Amazing. You got Gumi. Level it up, you get Gudra. Specializes in special defense. Thanks. Top of area four? Really annoying final evolution. It has to be raining to actually reach Gudra, but it'll probably rain at some point, and then you can go ahead and level it up. Massive, massive investment. You gotta get it to level 50 before it becomes Gudra. Gudra's not that great. I'm not gonna straight up call it bad, but I think there are other investment opportunities you could be taking advantage of. Why is this thing pure dragon? Can we be dragon poison at least? They should make like a dragon steel variant of this thing. That'd be way better. Maybe they'll do that in the DLC. Croagunk. Who could forget Chatter Croagunk for life from Iono's stream? Who wouldn't want to be with a Croagunk for life? It certainly feels like I've been with this thing for a lifetime, because this thing was also in Daipa and Legends, so it's in this game too. Toxicroak is actually kind of okay. Dry Skin is a really good ability. It actually rains fairly often on the overworld, so you'll get some free healing. Poison Fighting, not the greatest typing ever, but hey, fighting's not that bad. 106 attack, it's okay. 85 speed, good enough. And you end up getting some pretty good moves. 37 levels for this. That's unfortunate. Top of area four? I'd probably put this in like area three if it was like a level 25 evo. Why is the evo level so high? And Croagunk sucks, so you have to get this to Toxicroak before it can actually fight for itself. I'd like to publicly apologize. Apparently it's Croagunk. Sorry. I'm not redoing this. Watchroll. Regional bird. Evolves into Kilowattrel, which is a thousand times as strong. Wow. So electric flying as a type is actually pretty good. Volt absorb is nice and useful. Wind power might be useful if we were in competitive, where you actually had an ally to set up Tailwind for you. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Hits you pretty hard, wow. What level is the Evo? 25. Oh, seems pretty good to me. How high are we flying? Area 2? Electric good type. Flying okay type. You've got them both. The Eevee Lucian Squad. People love Eevee. I want you to know right now, I don't. I'll try not to let that affect these ratings. Vaporeon should be pretty easy, right? It's a water type. I guess you could use it. It's actually got decent special attack. But it's really slow. It's very fitting that it's in this game though, because all water in this game is just liquefied Vaporeons. Looks terrible. Break out the Microsoft paint fill bucket. This thing is literally C tier. Jolteon! Probably the best evolution? It's really fast. And it has 110 special attack. Nice. And it's a stone evo, so you can get it the moment you get Eevee. Okay. Area 2? You can Thunderbolt things. You can Shadow Ball things. I think that's it. Yup, that's about it. <laughs> what is this move pool? Speaking of horrible move pools, it's Flareon. <laughs> 130 base attack. That's great. Unfortunately, you're a Flareon. <laughs> Super slow, but hey, you hit really hard. Makuhito-ish? It gets Flare Blitz in this game, right? There's no way it doesn't. Hey, look at that. Justice for Flareon. Just gotta make it to level 50. Hope you like Fire Fang. Not even that early. Why do you have to wait to level 30 for Fire Fang? <laughs> Why do they hate Flareon so much? You gotta use the TM. Like, I mean, 130 base attack, even with just random physical moves, is still gonna do a ton of damage. Espeon. Probably the best evolution. It's really fast. And it's really strong. You can hit him with Stab Psychic. You can hit him with Shadow Ball. I think that's about it. Oh, what about Magical Leaf? Power Gem. Truly a monotype evolution movement. Can we get some good moves, please? Dazzling Gleam is pretty good. Ah, eh, we'll put it above Lucario. Probably the best evolution. Meanwhile, on the dark side of the moon, this is definitely the worst evolution. Umbreon. Ugh. Oh. 
What if Bronzong's typing wasn't as good? You get Umbreon. What does this thing do? It doesn't die. How much is that worth? Nothing. But hey, if your opponent actually does damage, you can use foul play to use their attack stat. Wish my attack stat was good. How about that? Leafeon. Ugh. 130 base defense. Worthless. 110 base attack. Pretty good. Grass type though. I hope you like grass moves. I don't. I'm pretty sure the earliest place you can get Eevee, it's like outside the normal gym, right? So that's actually already like level 25-ish. So they don't get that much of a bonus from being early stone evos. Glaceon. 130 base special. Great. Stab ice. Great. What's your base speed? Uh-oh. Could you think of a worse stat distribution? Fake bulk because you're an ice type. Slow. You can ice shard them. Physical move though. Freeze dry, good move. Shadow ball, hey, we've heard that before. That's about it. How about mud shot? Ah, these evolution move pools suck. High area four? It does a lot of damage if you don't die first, but you probably will. Sylveon. If you're struggling at school, consider enrolling in Sylveon Learning Center. Has the best typing out of any of the evolutions because it's a fairy type which is completely busted. These stats are okay. 110 special attack is pretty good. Slow though. Don't worry though, you can get him with Moonblast at level 50. And Shadow Ball, I guess. Have we heard that before? Any other moves? Psy Shock? Magical Leaf is back. Can we get some better move pulls, please? Hello? Bottom of area three, maybe? Or top of area four? Yeah, top of area four. I think I'd rather use Flapple. Last Pokemon for today. Dunsparce. Legends have circulated the school grounds for decades. One day, Dunsparce will receive an evolution and it will ascend. Finally, the day is upon us. Dunsparce evolves into the Dunsparce. It's Dunsparce, but more. And Dunsparce sucks! The head segment of Paldea's Finest. I will say, although the Dunsparce is a terrible Pokemon, it is a very good Dunsparce evolution. Because Dunsparce itself is a troll Pokemon, right? It's based on the Tsuchinoko, which is the worst cryptid ever. It's a legendary snake. You spend your whole life searching for it. Finally, you're about to die from old age. But as you're about to leave this mortal coil, you see it out of the corner of your eye. Tsuchinoko is real. What is it? It's a fat snake. It's just a chonker snake with no special abilities. And that's what Dunsparce represents. It's super rare, so you'd expect it to be powerful. You'd expect it to at least be okay. But it's not okay. It sucks. And when you evolve it to the Dunsparce, it just gets bigger. <laughs> now this base stat total is actually pretty good. 520 base stats is a lot. So for reference, Scyther has only 500 and so does Caesar. So this thing has a higher base stat total than either of them. That means it's better, right? No, because the vast majority of these stats mean nothing. Super slow, so it's never going first. But you can paralyze them with glare, I guess. And then with Serene Grace, you start trying to flinch him. 100 base attack, not the worst thing ever. How do you actually get to Dunsparce? You have to level up Dunsparce while it knows Hyper Drill. What level does it learn Hyper Drill? Level 32. How do I know that? Because I hatched about 100 Dunsparces. Well, we can pull one of them. What? Hang on. Okay, you guys are seeing this too, right? Bro, what happened to my other boxes? Yeah, I, I, I had one box of the Dunsparces. Look, I you can see the cursor moving, right? 
I move the cursor, but the... Oops, all done, Sparse? Hello? Oh my god. All of my boxes were overwritten with just one box of the top sparses. <laughs> How are we supposed to play the game? I don't know why it's not changing off box 14. Oh my god. Oh, this is a disaster. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just have a lot of the dun sparses. And I named them all Box 14. But you believe me, right? This game is that broken? Because the dun sparse, in true troll fashion, there's a 1% chance that instead of getting two segments, you get three. What does the extra segment do? Well, it's not nothing. The extra segment makes you heavier. So it means you take less damage from opposing heavy slams. But you also take more damage from opposing low kicks. Nothing for free in this world. What can you actually do with this thing? Here's glare. Drill run. Any base power. Hyper drill is the signature move here. 100 base power, so two less than return. Wow. Dragon rush. They're mocking us. They know. Zen headbutt. Stomping tantrum. The best part about the Dunsparce is that now that you can use Eviolite on Dunsparce in Little Cup, it's really good. No joke, it's actually really good. But you know who else is good in Little Cup? Onyx! Alright, it's been almost eight hours, so I think that is it for the first segment of this tier list. I didn't expect it to take this long. Five dollar donation from Jacob McBaggins, some wait their whole life for Tsuchinoko. We only had to wait eight hours for the Dunsparce. Consider yourselves lucky. This thing's a symbol of good luck, right?